Yo guys, what's up? And welcome to Zerg 3 or Zerg Platinum 3. We we made it to plat. Things are getting intense and I forgot to change my overlay. Shit. Oh no, dude. Chat, you didn't tell me. Okay. Oh, and we just also transferred my drones to the mineral line. Okay, this is a bad video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. It's okay. Don't even worry. I gotta. I just gotta make my overlord because that's important, right? Important is making drones. Okay. Uh, I gotta change this overlord placements as well. No. Good. Okay. I gotta move that in a second. Okay. I gotta make two more drones so we don't block. What are we against? We're against the Terran. We can go 17, that's fine. Rally one of my eggs, we're good. We have a moment now to spare. Change my max out timer to 9.30. Or 8, sorry, 8.30 is what I meant to say. And we're good. Okay. Now I gotta fix it. It's because it looks like garbage up there now. Guys, I'm trying to play the game and fix this all at the same time. Give me, give me a second, I'm sorry. We just made drones. And that, that's fine, whatever. That, that, that looks decent. Okay, so guys, we got habits. Okay, we got proper build and overlord placement. We got advanced scouting and understanding. That's gonna be the big one. That's gonna be the big one. And then also our max timer got a little bit faster. We're in plat now. Maxing a little bit faster. 8.30 boys, that's our new quota. We just saw your drone habits. Yeah, literally, I'm doing something else and I'm not even thinking about making drones, but I'm still going 5ST, 5ST, 5ST. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Okay, so we're gonna really try and break down what's going on here. And we're gonna try and give ourselves proper counters to whatever it is. We're gonna logically think about this. Our build still can work, by the way. The bronze to plat build we've done so far. It can still apply. The roaches... All this, all that beautiful stuff. But now what we're going to start doing is we're also going to start making four Zerglings now that we're in Platinum. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so there's nothing at his natural. Let's scout deeper in to the main. See his ramp. See what's going on. Start filling in gaps with my overlords. We see a barracks, two barracks. This is already looking like reapers, but we see marines. This is now looking like an all-in. So this overlord can go over here and chill the fuck out. It might die. If it dies, it dies. It's okay. But let's go ahead and get ourselves a lair. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a uh, third queen. And let's also go ahead and get ourselves a spine crawler. Overlord did die. It's fine. Here's what we're going to do now. Zergling. Go to his base. Zergling, go to his base. Zergling, go to this Zelnaga tower. And Zergling, go to this Zelnaga tower. And you know what we just did? We just scouted expansion times. If he's still going to ninja one out, because this is now an awkward build. And we're also going to see the middle of the map with cheap-ass Zerglings that we made for the Reaper, but he skipped the Reaper. But now it's giving us a vision of lots of things. And look, see that move out? That big-ass clump of red on the minimap? Make two more spines. Make another queen. Even fuck it, make another spine. Look, we can see it coming. That's a lot of marines, guys. Get my overlords out of harm's way. Keep making drones. And you know why I'm making drones? Because I made spines. We're not gonna make drones and zerg- Or sorry, we're not gonna make spines and zerglings. Unless he pulled his SCVs as well. But he's just making marines. So, just make drones and spines. We, the reason why we don't prioritize links here is because we don't have speed links. The reason why we don't prioritize, uh, or why we are prioritizing spines here is because they're amazing and I can also make drones while I make them. And look at my mineral line. It's fully saturated and we just denied that whole tack. If there were SCVs pulled with that, I would have made Zerglings. But that was not an all-in. That was not an all-in. That was an attack. That was a timing. But that was not an all-in. We are making a roach warren. Just for now, just to see what we need to do. 
Let's also make an overseer with one of our overlords and let's go scout his base. Let's also take our third Zergling out of the third and go back to his natural and see if we can spot a command center. There is no command center yet. And now he's going Marauders. Okay, so let's do this. This makes sense. Can do not you don't have to cancel the Roach Horn, it's fine. But let's make a spire now, guys. Let's just make a spire. Because what are we doing in, in now that we're in a... Uh, what are we doing now that we're in Platinum League? We are looking at his base with scouting and we're doing logical decision making behind that. Proper understanding of what the hell's going on. And you know what Marauders are good against? They're pretty fucking good against Roaches. But you know what Marauders are really bad against? Mutas. But you know what's good against Mutas? Marines. But you know what Mutas and Mar you know what Marines are really bad against? Mutas and Zerglings. It's combined. And Banes and stuff. Anyways. I'm making some army. Just because I hadn't seen his natural yet. Okay, now he made a natural. He hasn't moved out yet. I made some army because this is the equivalent of making the roaches like we would have otherwise. This is like making the 10 roaches. I made like 20 wings. And now we can go back to droning now that we know he has an expansion. So we'll fly over to the top side and forget about it. Just leave. Just wait it out. All my bases are, are rallied to my next expansion. And we can start getting upgrades on my uh, my units. We can even get a Baneling Nest because we know this guy's going bio. And look, he's moving out right now. So now stop droning. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's make two spines here. Let's make two spines here. And let's start making mutas. This way, no matter what base he hits, he's going to run into my spines. Make mutas. Make Zerglings. We're reacting to this as he moves out. We're not reacting to this for five minutes before he attacks me. We're reacting to it as he moves out. Inject. 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 He's in range. Let him come to the spines. Let him come to the spines. And now attack him. Just A-move everything. Army, A-move. Select all army. Okay, he's dying. Go ahead and saturate my mineral line. He just lost an attack. He lost the fight. So now we're fine. Everything doesn't matter anymore. Now let's... Because the fight's over and we just made more drones again. Let's take our overseer. And let's do it again. Run into his base. So it's a guarantee we can get away with droning right now. The reason why that is, is because he just lost his army. So that gives me a drone window. But we want to find out what his next army is going to be. More bio. There's his third command center. At two starports, it's going into Vikings now. It's going to be Viking Marine Marauder. Okay, that's, that's fine. Viking Marine Marauder is the name of the game now. And this game is a bit awkward. Only because of the amount of aggression this guy's already done, so our creep spread is awful, but we're going to start working on it now. But our drone count is good. We're at 82. As you can see on the top. Let's go ahead and make a good amount of mutas to go with this. We'll just, you know, we're going to get maybe, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Just make a nice juicy amount of mutas. Make enough. Because if he's going Vikings and Marines and Marauders, Mutas will be good here, but also so will Zergling Banelings. So let's also make a juicy amount of Banelings. All the all the rest of our economy can be filled in. Like, this is nice. It looks like a good, well-rounded amount of Mutas. That's a nice amount of Banes. Spread my creep. Over, uh, the drone saturation is still amazing. It's still really good. Now let's take my army and grab, like, two Zerglings. One shift click the right side of the map, one shift click the left side of the map. And let's find out where this dude is expanding. Inject my hatcheries. Inject my hatcheries. Because we did see the third base. You remember that. We saw the third, but where is he going to plant it? It's most likely going to be to the left of his main, but let's just confirm that. Keep making creep. 
Let's make a little bit more banes. Okay, cool. Now, does he have a base here? This is the last base we haven't seen yet. And there it is. It's actually off as well. So there's the base. So guys, look at our supply. We got attacked a lot early, but we are basically maxed out. Let's go ahead and select my whole army and let's get ready to go attack him. It just makes sense. We've made a logical choice that Mutaling Bane is going to be good against someone going Bio Viking. Here comes the Vikings. We're just A-moving the area. It's fine. We can spread our creep and inject our bases one more time really fast. There we go. And now we can go for a fight. Let's just really quickly check where his army is. Go to his natural with one link, go to his third with another. And let's go opposite of where his army is. His army's in his natural. Go to the third. Or if, if his army is split among both, just go to one then. Doesn't matter. Just go to the, th the smaller looking one. And now we have guaranteed our lead even further. And now we can just play the game of let's max out and attack over and over and over. Just A move into his base and fucking do it again and do it again and do it again. Fix our drones. Make units. <clears throat> so. This is a bit of an awkward game. This is a little bit different. But still very understandable, I hope. So we go for our standard build. We're doing our standard roach opener that we're normally doing. That's just what we can still do for now. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We're, we're initially going to do that. That's what our plan was. <clears throat> the same build we've done every league before this. However, we scout into his base. We see multiple barracks. This looks like it could be Reaper. Like there could be a third barracks there or something, and it's going to be just be mass reapers. But then we see marines, and he's making ma a lot of marines. We made these zerglings in case he made a reaper. Now, these zerglings have two jobs. Number one is, is if, <clears throat> if our opponent does not go for a natural and does not make a reaper, these no longer are reaperlings. Now they are map scoutinglings. He did not take a natural, so one of these links is going to go to the natural. One of these links is going to go to the third. And what the link at the third is going to do is if he ends up showing me a natural as my link and my natural dies, I'll leave the link at the third to find out when he takes a third. However, if my link at the natural dies early, I will then use this link at the third to scout again like 30 to 45 seconds later or a minute later to reconfirm is there a natural or not later on. I won't send it in immediately. I'll send it in like a little bit later. And the other two links can just do some type of map vision between your base and his base. And I would have put my link here, to be honest. One of the links would have went there, but because the way this map is designed, this is El Naga Tower, not only can see that location as well, but I can also see a lot more around it too. It can see this ramp. It can see if the, over to here pretty much. It can see down here a little bit. Like, I might as well put a fucking Zer Zergling here at the Zonaga Tower if all I'm looking to do is see when he leaves his ramp. Because this Zonaga Tower reveals all of that. So that's a great place to put it. And then I could also put one here, which also reveals my ramps outside my base. It reveals this ramp. It reveals if he comes towards this ramp. Like, these Zonaga Towers have amazing location positioning because this is not walkable terrain. Like, you have to walk through the Zonaga Tower on this map in one way, shape, or form. You, you have to. You cannot get around it. OP is on Naga Towers. So, that's what the Zerglings do. And since we also scouted that he has multiple production facilities, and he does not have a command center, we just make the spine. Like we always said before. Just one spine. Just for now. Just one. And we're droning. So our lings have all spread out. And we just saw a clump of marines with my Zergling, because I was trying to go to his natural. It died. And now we even more see, even furthermore, we see the, the amount of units coming here with the Zonaga Tower. And we can see a nice, juicy clump of Marines coming to my base. Now, if I make Zerglings for this, this I'm going to tell you guys right now the way this operates and works. 
If you have Zerglings that do not have speed, and there are enough Marines to one-shot a Zergling, and just to throw this out there, it only takes six Marines to one-shot a Zergling. And we're talking about fucking 14 Marines here. So he's got way more than six. You can actually kill Zerglings almost as fast as they run at your Marines. Like, he can just stutter step backwards and kill... If, I, if he has 14 Marines, he could probably kill, like, 30 Zerglings. And then if we think about time as a resource... How many larvae do I have right now? I have six that I'm about to spend because I'm making spines currently. If I made six larvae of Zerglings, that would be, by the time he gets to my base, that would mean I would have 12 Zerglings. If I send 12 Zerglings at 14 Marines... I will barely even touch his Marines, is what that means. Like, he will probably get smacked, like, three times on a Marine or two by a couple of Zerglings, and then all my Lings will be dead. Like, it won't do anything. So it is fucking pointless to make Zerglings right now, is my point. There's no reason. The only reason why it would make sense if to make Zerglings right now would be if there was, like, 15 SCVs walking with these Marines, because then... Instead of getting kited by Marines, my Zerglings could smack all the SCVs off the spine crawlers and get rid of the SCVs a lot faster so that the spines could then only kill the Marines. It would make sense then, because then if I make a bunch of drones, if he's going fully all in and it, this, uh, this one attack is going to end the game, whether he wins or loses the fight, why the fuck do I make drones then if it's this early of an all in? You know what I mean? Like I might as well make Lings if there was a full SCV pull with it. Rein like reinforce as much power as I can get to get rid of the SCVs, and then also the Marines can get killed by the Spines. But, I make Spines. Because he's going for this really heavy Marine timing. But, if I if I make Drones now, I can, I can still, I lose, I lose some of my economy, sure. But here's the difference. If I lose some of my economy, because this dude is going for a big-ass Marine timing, this is a big investment to do early game. This is also a big investment to do early game. But I can, this now gives me the excuse to make mass drones behind it. And I can recover way faster than him because he's doing this off of one base. And I am doing this off of two bases. So I produce faster than he does. And again, we made these as a reaction to scouting it, not just to panic. I only made one. I made one as a reaction to the fact that he didn't expand. And I made three more to the reaction that he is literally fucking doing a timing. That is huge. What if the guy who just walks up the ramp, no fucks given? What if my queens are standing right here? He can't walk through queens. And then, there you go, the timing is over. And now let's look at the, the difference. So we didn't lose any of our spines. The only thing we lost was one queen. Uh, we lost an overlord and a zergling as well from scouting. But the only thing we lost in this defense was one queen. So that was a terrible trade for Terran in that fight. He just lost 13 out of 14 marines. And one marine gets away to tell the tale of how shitty that was. That's that guy from 300 that doesn't have two eyes. He has only he has, only has one eye because the other eye has a, a little blindfold on it. He's going to write books about that fight. <sighs> okay. Now. Guys. We have spines that we can rotate around now. This is great. It's nice. But, again, the bigger one is, is look at the drone count. We did not make Lings, and Lings would have done literally nothing for me there. All that would have happened is, is he would have kited away from the Spines, killed all the Lings, and then would have re-engaged the Spines, and then the same result would have happened. Or I would have not made as many Spines, because there is also a cost balance, right? If I would have made mass Lings, I wouldn't have been able to have afforded four Spines. I might have only had two Spines. Things like that. That's where you got to make your choices. And I've already explained why Lings didn't really make sense, which is why we didn't make them. But because we made spines when we were also able to make drones on two bases, now suddenly the worker count is amazingly in our favor. We're ahead by a lot. So this is a great game. This is a great position to be in. This is awesome. 
One other thing to keep in mind too, that you should know, is this again, this is the cost of units, right? Does a supply depot cost gas? Does a barracks cost gas? Does a marine cost gas? The answer to all of these is no. And he made mass marines to start the game off with, which means there's a guarantee his uh, gas was very delayed. So let's look at my gas. I've, and I know this, and we'll, we'll, we'll see this in a second, but I have mined on my gas 500 right now. And for those of you who don't know how that works, you start at 2250. Okay. And I'm at 1770. So you can average it off and just say you've mined 500 because 22 minus five is 17. It's very close to 500. It's, you know, it's fucking 476. But you don't have to be exact. Like I said before, it does not have to be exact. The thing that I don't want people to get caught up on is being like the exact fucking number all the time because the number always changes as well. The number always changes. So just estimate it and 500 is fine. You're in a ballpark. It's all we cared about. Look at his gas. He's mined 200 and he's mined 200. And he's doing it off of double gases now as well. So I have mined more gas than off of only just one than he has mined off of two gases simultaneously. That means his like his gases combined don't even equal the one gas that I've had the whole time. This is why his gas is so fucking delayed. We knew this was a thing. There's not uh, there's nothing against him taking double gas. But what the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is this, okay? Things take time in StarCraft to make. You can't just instantly do things. So if he delayed his gas this hard and now he's going for like a higher surge of gas at a later time, we can, we can immediately rule out the fact that there is a starport in this game or that there is a factory in this game. None of that makes sense. The best thing he could have is something like this where he's like, I'm going heavy on gas now and maybe I'll start a factory. Or maybe instead I'll also just do some upgrades on my barracks. That makes more sense because he, he could now have gas being mining, but he can't have long-term tech like that takes a while to make because he hasn't been uh, dedicating to time enough to gas in this game. So we already know what's going on. Even without even seeing his base, I can tell you this right now. This is, this is what I can say. Okay, no natural still. Okay, we're looking at another all-in probably. And this all-in is most likely going to have more barrack shit. But there is a chance that he might be trying to tech up now. But I wouldn't be, like, thinking to myself, what if, like, two Banshees are flying out of his base right now? Like, fuck no. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> and then we confirm it's Marauders. So that even more so says, okay, now he's taking gas and now he's going Marauders. That makes us feel very comfortable. And we also see the expansion. So... We see that that was a timing. It wasn't an all-in. And again, we knew it was an all-in because SCVs didn't get pulled with it. It was just a timing. But now that he has a natural, he's just accepting the fact that he's really far behind and we're going to play the game from that stage. Marauders cost 25 gas. Yes, they do. Good job. I, you get a plus one for that. Well done. And now we can further scout into his base and see what else is going down. But look, he's starting a factory. This is such a, like, he's starting a factory when we're already halfway done with a spire. Just so you guys know, a factory is the same thing as a layer for a Zerg. And we've had a layer for, like, over two minutes. Huh? You don't know what I mean by that? Tech path. We're talking about tech path. The, the build order tech path for Terran is barracks factory. The tech path for Zerg is spawning pool layer. In terms of tech path, a factory is your layer. It's the same thing. It unlocks the next tier. Factories unlock the next tier. And now he moves out again with another rando army. And this time around, again, we were not making... We were not making... A, uh, we were not making an army. We only made the initial initial units here, which this, once again, follows the same rule as, like, the roaches. 
You guys remember? Like the eight roaches, ten roaches. These links follow that same rule. And if you're if you're like, Vibe, this is the first video I've watched, okay? I didn't watch any of your previous videos because I'm better than that. If that's your mindset, I recommend you do go watch them. But if you're really stubborn and you don't want to watch them, it's okay. I'll explain it really fast. As Zerg, correct timing for making units is two fully saturated bases. We're talking like about three gas saturation and two full mineral lines. And then make about like we're talking about like 16 to 20 supply of army. And normally we make roaches. But in this game, just because of how it went, we skipped the zerglings. Or sorry, we skipped the roaches. Even though we made the roach warren uh, earlier. We skipped roaches because my Zergling revealed to us <clears throat> that we're getting attacked by a Marauder timing. And Marauders fucking destroy roaches. Like, pretty hard. <coughs> so, if I made roaches, it would be really bad. <clears throat> no point to make roaches against this. <clears throat> this is a lot of Marauders. So, Zerglings made more sense. And we scouted that, like, a full minute ago with our Zergling that ran up the ramp. So, yeah. Like... That was why we skipped the roaches, but we still invested the same amount of supply into Zergling. And then also because of what his build was, where he's now just going for more mass barracks units, he's going mass bio for timings over and over and over. This is keeping his economy really low, but against somebody who goes bio, especially one that's like split 50-50 Marauder Marine, what is one unit you guys think would own this? We chose to make it, but I'll tell you, it's a Muta. If this guy doesn't have a lot of marines, he's and he also has no medivacs, he's very susceptible. And also, you can't say broodlords because, again, that's a factor of time. There is no fucking way we could have broodlords in time to defend this because that's broodlords will come out at fastest by like nine minutes. So this is something where you really have to understand the timings of things as well to make assumptions like that. Um, but right now to deal with this kind of an army. He doesn't have a lot of Marines, and he has no support to Marines either. He has no upgrades, and he has no uh, no medevacs. So these Marines are very, very susceptible to getting fucked on by ro by uh, by Mutas. And if we just have a little bit of support with my Mutas, with a little bit of Zergling, or a little bit of Baneling, suddenly these Marines die immediately, and then it's just Mutas killing Marauders at that point. And then, even better, if I have enough army supply, I'll just overpower all of it before all my ground units die. But at the very least, all I got to do is kill his marines and he's dead. Like, this army loses at that point. So what do we do? We, as soon as we see him moving out, we start making units. We start going into Mutalisk and we start going into uh, Zergling. And we take our four spines from earlier on, earlier on in the game and we go like this. What are the two locations he can attack me from? Here and here. This, these two locations are the only places he can get into my base from because he has no medevacs. So we put two spines at both entrances just to be safe. It's like a little bit of an extra buffer to do damage for us to his stuff. <clears throat> and we're just injecting and making units. He shows up at my top ramp. And we, uh, we wait for him to kind of engage on my spines. My units kind of A-move themselves in because they got pulled in. But we just wait for my units to kind of group up. L let him also group up on the spines. So my spines are constantly poking. I don't outrange my spines this way. And then we go. And now look at the marine count. Watch his marine count. Just we'll, we'll play it and look how fast the marines die. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. And again, once there, once if there's ever a point where there's no upgrades involved, there's no one one two two three three, and it's equal number marines to mutas, and these marines also have no medevac support, mutas actually trade pretty well. That's not even to mention the fact that he's also getting smashed by spine crawlers repeatedly, and he's also getting hit by zerglings in his face, which makes it even more so that the mutas are going to crush. And now we can get a nice scout into his base once again to reconfirm what is happening. So we'll grab our Overseer and we'll send it back in. We can drop a Changeling and we can send our Changeling to the opposite location. We can be like, Changeling, go to his natural. This Changeling could possibly scout composition again. And it can also scout, like I said before, comparing builds. We can scout the fact that we want to see how many workers he has on his mineral line. So look at this. We go, okay, no third. Okay, that's cool. We're going further in. 
All right. There's his third. Okay. Look at his natural mineral line. No gas being mined, really. He's only got one SCV on that one and nothing on this. He does have a lot of juicy SCVs here, so this is fully saturated. But he doesn't have gas mining efficiently yet. Uh, but now we also see... Okay, now he's got double star ports. He is getting ready to switch. and He actually has had enough time now to develop himself to the tier... The, like the tier 3 tech, essentially. Even though it's not really tier 3. It's uh, he's He's been able to go to a star port, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. And we see, okay, he's still committed to bio. Bar barracks, 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 barracks. All tech labs. I'm going to throw this out there, guys. And I'm going to say, if you see a fucking Terran on all tech labs, their marine production sucks. Pretty bad. Again, if you don't know what this means, a tech lab can only produce one unit at a time. But the perk of a tech lab is, is it can upgrade things on it. And it can also unlock the ability to make any unit out of the barracks. Aside from the ghost, because a ghost also needs a secondary building, which is a ghost academy. But a tech lab unlocks the ability to make marauders. And then if you make a ghost academy, it can also make ghosts. A reactor does not have the ability to upgrade anything, but it does have the ability to make two marines or two reapers at a time. So seeing all tech labs, I'm like, well, that makes mutas look even better. Because his marine count is going to be very tiny every time. And just comparing it right now, let's look at let's look at counts of units. He has 14 marines. I have eight mutas. That is a uh, normally what you would want to see for Terran is like, oh, Zerg has eight mutas and I have 32 marines. That's more like it. That's more what you want to be around. You want to be like definitely overwhelming the muta number with marines. You don't want to have it in semi sim like similar numbers. Okay, and then we're like, all right, cool. Now, looking at his tech, you know, that's one thing that's nice that this reinforces that Mutaling Bane was a good choice because of the lack of Marines. Uh, makes Mutas way better, and, and Ling Bane just support that. Now, remember what I said here? We saw no third, and we also saw no gas being mined at one of them, only one SCV on another gas, and a good saturated mineral line. So if this guy just fixes his SCVs, he will be optimally saturated on his natural, okay? But he still isn't fully optimal yet. Let's look at our natural. It's fully optimal. Let's look at what else is going on. Look at our third base. It's fully saturated. Let's look at our fourth base. It's fully saturated. This is a position where we're like, okay, well, we shouldn't be worried about anything really because we just killed his army twice, which again, that gave us drone windows to make workers out of. Because if we kill his army, we don't suddenly just get attacked again 20 seconds later and die. If we kill his army, he has to spend like the next two minutes building up a new one to attack again. So it's a drone window. And then throughout these drone windows, we have created a lead where we have 83 drones to 50 SCVs. And we can we also saw that he doesn't even have his third at his third yet. So we know for a fact we have the biggest fucking lead ever we could possibly have right now. It's a massive lead. We should know like you should know from this position we are definitely ahead. And we just also rescouted his composition. Mutation. So the goal now for us would likely be, and again, we're also at the optimal saturation. So what happens again? Uh, I'm going to pause it one more time and say this. What do I always tell you guys whenever I say we're a max saturation and we're talking about this rule right here? Advanced scouting and understanding. What, what is the next step after we scout composition for our opponent and also like, uh, like, like economy and stuff like that? The next step we always do is future expansions. Like, where the fuck is he expanding now? Like, where's the next one going to go? Where's the next one going to go? Where is he throwing his bases down? It's no longer really about how many bases he has. Because we're going to... We, we have now hit the perfect saturation. So base count doesn't matter anymore. Base count is... A, like, you can just throw that shit out the window. Be like, oh, okay, well... I have optimal saturation, so I don't care what he has. I'm already now in the in the phase of the game where I make nothing but units the entire time. All I'm doing is making army, 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 army. I don't make drones anymore. So we could care less how much workers he has at this point. Now it's about where can we attack? That's really what we want to do. We want to maintain our own good economy and we want to fuck his over. So if we just look for where his bases are, we can extend our lead further by cont uh, continuously crushing his economies, his new economies. 
Yo, Sir Willie, thank you very much for the 37 months with the Vibu Noms. Oh my God. Did you bring enough for me? Thank you. So yeah, we're gonna take it now from a point, uh, like a state of mind where we know we're gonna max off of what we have and it's gonna be fast because we have a great economy. And now we just need to uh, kill, a, kill his, that's all it is. Yo, thank you for the sub as well. Um, uh, Poi Poilu, Bun Poilu, thank you. We're just making a nice, well-rounded Baneling, Muta, Zergling, because we know he's going bio. We're scouting the map for bases, all bases. We've just scouted every base in the map except his third, and we see the third. And look at the third. This is, again, an indicator. I look at this and I see the fucking, like, no economy, really. Like, well, you got, like, one SCV on the mineral line, and you got one dude mining gas, and you got one guy building a turret. Like, this, uh, now he's got two SCVs on the mineral line, because another one just finished or something. This is not intimidating. This is not intimidating, because look at, our, this is his third, by the way. Look at our third. Once again, our third has been saturated for a fucking long time. Look at our fourth. Look at our fifth. Our, our, well, our fifth has no saturation on it, but it's about to. We're going to start transferring to it. But you guys get the point. Like, we know that is a confidence booster right there. That is like, well, this guy has some money problems. <laughs> He's got some money problems, boys. Yo, what's up, uh, Joe? How you doing? So, what do we do now? What do we do now? Again, we already talked about attacking his base. You guys understand that point. But what is the what is the logic behind this? What is the concept? The concept is, once again, you should not be worried about what this guy has. Okay? We should not be worried about the fact that this guy could have one thing or another. Because here's how it works. If if I if again, if I am the curve, if I am the one the game is being based off of. If I just maxed out, for the most part, we're not maxed yet, but you, we're, we could be there. Okay, we're fucking supply blocked, but you get the point. I could be maxed right now. If I just maxed off of the economy that I have after all things were said and done after how this game opened, I just maxed out and I have, had an, I have realized multiple times this game I have a better economy than my opponent. That means that it is impossible for him to be maxed out. Terran units don't cost like one-fifth the amount of Zerg units and give way more supply. This game is designed in a way where um, not only does Zerg max out faster than the other races, but on top of that, every race has a relatively similar max out overall. Like we're talking like if everyone's playing optimally, the ra each race is going to max out within like one to two minutes of each other. So if, this, if we know this guy's behind and we know Zerg should also be ahead of him, we know for a fact he's nowhere near maxing out right now. We know we know we have the big lead. There's no reason why we shouldn't know that. So if we take our big lead and we do this with it, we just continuously rip his economy apart because what it does is it forces him to not be able to tech switch. I think I just said that, but I'm saying it again. <laughs> uh, I've, I've said this before like three times, which is why I'm getting kind of like or I'm skipping points here. Let me say it like this. If this Terran were to actually make a tech switch, and let's say he goes, you know what? I don't want to go bio anymore. I'm going to lift off every barracks and I'm going to go mech. His supply would not be as high as it is. His supply would be probably like 123 because you'd have to equate, uh, account for the cost of the new buildings as well. All these new buildings would have to be built, which costs money and gas. And that would mean that's units that you don't have anymore because all that money that you just spent on buildings is now gone. So your supply drops because of that, because of the fact that you just spent money somewhere on just buildings. The buildings don't give you supply. The next reason is, is because his supply would also be lower because if someone makes a tech switch in the middle of what they're doing, that's also time that they now have to waste where it's like, well, if I make four factories right now to fill in these four barracks, what is the build time of a factory? It's 43 seconds. And if he puts fucking four factories down, that means his production ceases to be for out of four production facilities for 43 seconds, and then it resumes again. So that's also time that he doesn't spend building units, which is going to be another thing that pushes his supply down. So it's imp what I'm saying is, is it is impossible for him to tech switch and not die. 
Like he's going to die if he tech switches. Now here's the other thing. We already know what composition he's on and we can force him to stay on it and keep him in a bad spot if we just apply pressure once we max and we keep ruining his economy. So he, the only the best chance he has is just remaking what he already has, what he's already committed to because he's behind and our army is already designed to counter it anyways. So he's super dead. My point is, is there's no way out of this that he wins if we just continuously starve him out. Like if we force him to react and he loses everything. Force him to react, he loses everything. He will die over time to this. All we have to do to be able to, 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 be able to establish a position for ourselves like this is have good macro which is everything we've already talked about in every previous league, like maintenance of mineral lines, saturation of mineral lines quickly, like getting drones fast, adding production when you need it, not before, not deviating your larva, using your larva efficiently. It gives you positions to be like, uh, to be in this game like this, where you just have this like overwhelming, like I am literally Zerg now, like Starship Troopers shit, and I'm just going to throw shit at you until you die over and over. You're going to eventually die to it. Mineral and it looks like this. Depleted. We get across the map. We take a moment to scout what base is more vulnerable. We just grab a zergling and we go, okay, let's uh, let's attack the vulnerable base. This base, pretty vulnerable looking. This base, over here, uh, not so vulnerable. His whole army is at his natural. So what do we do? We don't go for the army. We go for the economy because what happens then is, is if we if we like this army does a lot of DPS by the way. If we kill this command center and then lose our entire army to this army somehow, at the very least, this guy is going to have a hard time once again remaxing because he doesn't have any money to do it. And then we just A-move his base with the rest of our army. And this, this fight is most likely going to go well for us because of the fact that not only is my army designed well against his because we've scouted him multiple times, but at the same time, uh, we have more supply, which is what we know we do because of all the times. We, again, when we scouted his army composition, we also scouted his economy. Like, how well is he doing? And we kept confirming, oh, we're way ahead. Uh, oh, we're still way ahead. And if you're ahead once, twice, three times, you gain positions to be able to do something like this to your opponent. You know you are the one who is in charge of the game, and you get to force reactions out of your opponent. And the best way to force a reaction out of your opponent is to, uh, you know, never let them have breathing room once you're at the stage where we are now, which is max kill, max kill, max kill, max kill. Over and over and over again. I'll let you guys watch it one more time because he asked for it. Why not? Why not? Let's have fun. Watch these Marines die to Banelings! Nice. Baneling Tsunami. That's right. But yeah, just just really trying to like expand your mindset to know when you are and when you aren't ahead. And again, that really does come from the mineral line. A lot of a lot of that comes from expansion times and mineral saturation. And just when you see it, you compare. Okay, so we're playing a random player. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, random's only no cheese, that's all. Well, if he cheeses us, we'll deal with it. It's all good. It's all gravy. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer is no fancy panda on that one. No, uh, Stim Junkie Jet, thank you for the 33 bits. Thank you for the bits, dude. We 
Quiet. You're the first streamer I found that's actually helpful about this game. Thank you for that. Yo, thank you. I'm glad you're liking what, uh, what I'm selling here. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We're gonna make a pool. We require more minerals. Make a drone, we make a drone. Same build order we've been doing before, just something super basic. Spawning pool, gas. Hatchery, spawning pool, gas. <laughs> Nothing too crazy yet. We're chilling. Send this overlord forward. The timing of when I send that overlord forward was when uh, we're also going to make four lings again. Because we don't know what he is. And we're just going to be safe. Just like last time against Terran. But we send this overlord forward to the other side of the guy's base when we make our third overlord, which is going to replace my natural overlord. Which is going to be in the front. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with a Prodos. Who is gone for a forge and he's not expanding. So you guys don't know what this means? This is a passive as fuck Prodos. He's going defensive cannons. There's nothing to be scared of. Even so this is that one this is that one instance where I will say normally when you don't have a natural on your opponent's base, normally I would be like, okay, you probably want to get a uh, spine crawler. Don't do it this time. This dude has invested into static D. We don't need a fucking spine now. We do not need a spine. Now let's do our zerglings. Let's make one zergling, go to the natural. One go to his third, one go to his other potential third, and one sit on top of the ramp. So we can see him move out. If it happens. Let's go ahead and make our Roach Warren. We'll just make it back here. And an Evo Chamber. And look at his Nexus. He's not building probes. You can tell because the crystal's not lighting up. It's not. It doesn't have swirly shit around it. He's got more gates. He's gonna do a nice, looks like charge lot all in. I would say this is gonna be a charge lot all in. Or DTs. Because he's going for a Twilight Council and he's rushing it on one base. But look, we already have a lair. And a Roach Warren's almost done. So what we're gonna do, just, just because we have a lot of money, we're going to um, start a third base. We're gonna start a third base. We don't if it if it if we don't get to saturate it, it's okay. It does not matter. But it, if we defend an attack, suddenly that third base is gonna be able to be saturated, and then it's great. Okay, so let's get another queen, and we're all we're doing right now is making roaches. And we're gonna go up to about ten roaches. And he's attacking now. We can see it with our Zergling Scouts we had. So, keep making roaches. We are, we guaranteed are up one full base over him. So if he's gonna set up an attack, he's committed to this now. This is, this is an all-in. With how late this natural is, this is an all-in. So just make roaches until he dies. If he had a natural, I would only make like 10, and then I would make more if I needed to, if they started dying. But if he does not ever expand, I should probably just make roaches. I should probably not worry about trying to drone my third now. And now look, we'll send my queens into the fight and just keep making roaches. We still have one queen in the main ready to inject the main. We can inject their natural again even. And we'll just make roaches. We could even send one queen now to our third base to inject our third base. The army was just killed. We have more roaches that are spawning in just a second. And now... He's expanding, so now, guess what? This third base suddenly comes into play now and I make drones. Because again, drone windows are when your opponent throws their shit away. So now let's go back to a standard game. Let's throw an Overseer into his base. Let's do it off this guy right here. 
make an overseer and let's find out what composition he wants to go into. And we can even take a fourth base while we're at it. What are you doing now? What's your plan? And we, we also know he doesn't have a third because our lings are still at his thirds. He's going into Stargate now. Double Stargates. He's a Stargate transitioning Protoss now, so... What's a great unit to go against Stargate? That's easy. Let's go fucking Hydras. We're reacting to it intelligently. Drone count. We're at 75, guys. We're almost done. You can get to this point super fast. <clears throat> now, if this guy were to attack me with what he has right now, keep in mind, you gotta keep this. You gotta keep things like this in your mind. I could make drone, or sorry, I could make roaches right now if he were to attack me again right now. But this guy is very far behind, and if you remember what I said. If you tech switch when you're behind, it delays production of units because tech switching costs money. And on top of that, uh, uh, what else? There's another point that I was going to say again, but now I need to fix my economy. And uh, he also lost his whole army already as well. He didn't like retreat with it. He literally lost all of it. So we didn't really need that much time to get to the point to where we're maxing out with our units. We're, we have a lot of minerals, so we can um, make a macro hatch. Inject, inject, inject. We can talk more about it when the replay happens, too. So it's not like it's... I, I don't, if I miss a point, we'll come back to it. Take another hatchery, because we're mining our bases out a little bit. We're, we're like, oversaturated a little. And we're making hydras, guys. Hydralisks. Hydraliscola. Let's go ahead and get a Evo Chamber and a Infestation Pit, a second Evo Chamber because I don't have a Carapace upgrade right now. And let's do Creep. 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 Make Hydras. Creep. We can make another Creep Chamber over here. For the Queen. Creep. Creep. Make Hydras. Creep. Creep. Inject. 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 Make Hydras. Yo, thank you very much, dude, for the two month resub, Jim Jigamin. Thank you, dude. Alright, guys, let's do it again. Creep. Creep. Make hydras. Creep. 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 Make hydras. Creep. 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 Make hydras. We are maxed out. So, he still doesn't have a third. Our lings are still there. So, grab my army and go into his natural and then into his base entirely. Let it happen. That army is fucking huge. If you guys want to know Protoss' supply right now, I would say it's probably around 80. He probably has about 80 supply right now. And the reason why we know that is because he tech switched. His supply, or his, uh, his economy is super delayed. He took a natural really late. And then... Yeah, it's just... He's trying to make expensive fucking units. If he can creep, creep, creep. I would say 80. 80, boys. 80s would be my guess. In that ballpark. Uh, when I moved out. Because you have to keep in mind, right? He delayed his expansion, and he made a lot of production. And then on top of that... Also, we can look at our army for a second and be like, what's going on? It's It was a mothership. And carriers. Okay, look at this. We'll go back to right when we maxed. My, again, my guess is 80. Or, you know what? We'll, we'll, go, we'll come back to that. We'll come back. We'll, we'll look at the whole replay and we'll get there eventually. Okay. So, Protoss opens with Gateway Forge Cannon defensively. I can't tell you how much of a good feeling that is for a player to see that when you're going against that because that means that this is a delayed expansion really hard and this is also more like the cannon reinforces the fact that it's also going to be a delayed timing this cannon is if he if this guy's plan is to go for a timing attack making a cannon is a counterproductive as fuck it's terrible
So we made four lings because we're going to start making four lings in general from now on. These these lings are backup scouts and you can see how well they've already done in the last two games. These lings are dealing with so many different types of weird ass timings and all ins. They're giving us lots and lots and lots of information. They're really, really useful. We scouted into his base with our overlord and we saw everything that we saw. We saw the forge, the cannon, the double gate. Seeing this guys and also here's the big thing too. I want you guys to look at the nexus. Okay, this is a big deal. First of all, look at the Chrono Boost of the Nexus. That Chrono Boost on that Nexus is a lot right now. And that means he has not he has two Chrono Boosts ready to go. It costs 50 per Chrono Boost. He has not been Chronoing probes very much. He has only spent one Chrono Boost so far this whole game. He could have 150 right now. Roughly. I think it's 150. I don't think he could be 200 yet. Uh, but... Two Chrono Boosts are still active on this Nexus. This Nexus is not making probes. This means this Protoss has zero desire to set up for a future development after this game is after the, you know whatever he's doing. This is very all in. If someone stops making workers and they have zero intention of expanding their economy for a while, this means this timing is going to be very, very, very committed. It's it's if it's not if you wouldn't want to label it as all in, it's as close as you could get to that. But again, look at the Nexus. It is not building workers. Let's go back really fast, and I'll just show you what a Nexus does look like when it does build workers, so you can see what, what I'm talking about. Look at the crystal on top of the Nexus. Do you see how it swirls? It's kind of behind the bar. We'll go to my vision. Uh, my vision can't count because I don't get in there fast enough. Normally, we won't see a bar because the only reason why we're seeing this is because it's a replay, and I, we're seeing it from his perspective as well. But, um, yeah, the crystal swirls. It will swirl again. You can kind of see it. It's swirling around the top. It has, like, lines and shit going around it. Anyways, we, we just... My point is, is we knew he wasn't, uh, he wasn't building probes. It's very committed. Um, two zealots as well. This... This means we gotta wonder where is his gas going, and he's getting an upgrade on the forge. That's where his gas is kind of going. And then he makes a stalker, kills my overlord, and then this is a big one. This is huge. This is very huge, okay? We scout a twilight council in his base. We scout a third gateway and a twilight council. Now here's why this is important. You need to know what can happen from a twilight council and knowing what can now also this is a timer right here this twilight council is almost done so if you guys had to look at this i'm not even going to show you the build time of the, of the twilight council but if you had to look at that twilight council and go how many more seconds do you think this thing needs to finish building my guess would i would say is like five i'd be like oh, probably like five seconds And, again, that's something that you should probably, you know, over time start learning things like this. But let's let's look at it really fast. It's uh, eight. It's or uh, yeah, eight seconds away. So I was off a little bit. Again, ballpark it. If you said something like, let's just say in your mind, you were like, I don't know, two seconds or one second, or if you were like, I don't know, twenty-five seconds. Like, yeah, you need to probably fucking fix that up a little bit, but. Get like a rough, as like a good rough estimate as to what it is. So like someone said in the chat said 10, I said 5. Either one of those would be fucking fine because we're within a couple seconds of when it's actually finishing. So with that being said, if this guy goes for a Twilight Council, that also does mean he is not going to suddenly just attack me the second it's done. This means at the bare minimum, I have like another minute before I get attacked. Because here's logical thinking. Why the hell would you make a Twilight Council and then immediately attack before you get some type of a benefit from it? It makes no sense. That would be like me doing a Baneling bust, but really quickly I'm going to make a layer for no reason. I'm just going to re reduce some of my resources so I can uh, Baneling bust you with, without layer benefits anyways. It doesn't make any sense. No one plays like that. There is a purpose here for this Twilight Council. 
So this guarantees I have at least a minute before uh, that, you know, before this, before this takes effect. At least, at least. And what we're talking about here is we have a charge upgrade. We have a blink upgrade. We have a resonating glaives upgrade. That is a 100 second upgrade, a 100 second upgrade, and a 121 second upgrade. So two minutes and almost two minutes on the other ones. You also have to take into account that these will go a little bit faster than that because there is Chrono Boost and he has a lot of it ready to go. So that's why we, that's where the minute comes in because of multiple Chrono Boosts on one building. He could Chrono Boost it three times and he could get it out in half the time basically, which would mean he's about a minute away from having a timing. But the big thing is, is he's going to do something with this, whether it be build a Dark Shrine or, which is, again is also about a little bit more than a minute. It's a 71 second build time. It's just, again, we're ballparking it. Seeing that building, being able to, like, scouting it if it was already done and it was already upgrading, I'd be more like, okay, uh, now we got to kind of think about, like, when this building was built and maybe that is more of a factor now. And you got to understand the timings of when these things could really be. But just seeing it when it was almost done, that's, like, guaranteed. Guaranteed minute. We're good. And if we think about where we're going to be in a minute, we have one minute from right now. Look at this. We're already fully saturated on the natural. We're already fully saturated on the main. All we're doing for the next minute is getting my gases going and making roaches. So we definitely have enough time right now to make roaches and defend ourselves before we get attacked by his timing. These are the things you need to be aware of. This, this gives you lots of confidence in StarCraft if you understand things like this. And again, how do you understand things like this? You start learning timers of things. And if you don't know it exactly, again, it's okay. Just get a ballpark of it. Like, literally, I would be okay. Like, here's an example. I would be literally okay if you just said to yourself, okay, every Twilight Council upgrade is roughly two minutes. But if you chrono boost it a lot, one minute. I'd be okay with that, even though that's not exact. It's close enough. It is close enough to actually have a comprehensible understanding of the game as to what the hell is going on. So try and commit. Like, again, I'm glad this was an example here. This is a unique example. Things like this are things you need to commit to your memory. Like things. You, they, this is how you learn and get better at the game. You start learning situations like this. Yo, by, by the way, uh, Takari, thank you very much for the nine months, dude. I can't ignore you. I appreciate you, man. And Big Joe, thank you for the three month sub as well. Uh, literally the only reason I play StarCraft 2. Love the series. Keep it up. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. And now our money's getting up. It's getting higher. So what do we do? We take a third base because we can we can afford it without really disrupting our larva. We have all of our larva spent. So we go, all right, fuck it. Let's take a third. And again, I'm blind now. This could be charge. It could be blink. It could be a resonating glaives. Or like I said, it could also be DTs. So we make the overseer to prepare for the DT aspect and making roaches counters everything else because everything else will have less supply than we do in roaches. Now let's really quickly look at this. This dude is going for a one base four gateway plus one charge lot timing. He has committed everything to that. He is starting his natural now. Let's look at army supply, or worker supply really fast. Worker supply for Protoss is 24, or we can see it up here. Worker supply for Protoss is 24, for Zerg is 41. We have a nice juicy lead. We are definitely mining a lot more than he is. But now let's look at army supply. He has 16 army supply and we have 27. We're getting one base all in and we have more supply than him. Almost double. And the reason why that is, is because his build was not the most efficient. He did multiple gates and then he went for a council. He also got a forge and he got his forge upgrade done way earlier before his charge upgrade was done and he made a cannon. Like the build was a bit random. It wasn't the most efficient it could have been. But if we do just an efficient opener with like if we just respect efficiency, this is where even if we don't even scout everything, we can, ass we can assume the range of what he's going to do. And if our build's also efficient, we're fine. Nothing really matters. We know that... <coughs> Excuse me. We know that uh, our build is going to have a realistic chance to hold here. We should be okay. 
We have a, a good grasp on what's going on. And then, we, we also know with how late his natural was that this is committed. This is a definite serious timing. So we don't stop making roaches because all we need to do is kill this. And as soon as we kill it, then we can make drones because that is a drone window. So his army is trading with me right now. We're still making roaches in the top. His army is now bled out and now it's dead. So now at this point, he is now at a point where he's like, fuck, I'm losing this fight. I'm dead. I need to retreat. We can now, this is in me, this is the beginning of a drone window. This is me going, okay, we discovered uh, in a second here. I think it's, I, I think I sent a link in like, or it's a changeling, that's what it is. We discovered that he has a natural. We discovered the natural. We also uh, killed his army. And now this is the beginning of going, well, this guy wants to go into a macro game from here. And he just failed kind of an all in. And we're, so we're already ahead. We already know we're ahead. And now we're just going to drone up to make the, the lead go even bigger. So we make drones. Drones are logical here. We could, we, however, we could try to just make mass roaches and go in the game right now. You could do that. But that is a way we could also throw the game back into his favor. What if we take a really bad trade? For instance, what if like... Um, what if... Okay, imagine this with me if you will. What if this dude also made a dark shrine behind his Twilight Council... And he had like, instead of zealots, let's say he has four stalkers over here right now. Just four stalkers. And then he makes like two DTs here as I get across the map. And let's say he has like a proxy pylon that makes like one or two DTs over here. And he let's say two DTs. And he runs one DT in each one of my mirror lines. And as I do a timing of roaches, and let's say he kills my overseer with stalkers, and suddenly DTs kill all my roaches as I kill his natural, and I set him back to one base... I look back at my base and I've lost like 30 drones and I'm like, oh shit. Now I'm actually dead because I just got countered by DTs and now I'm fucked. Because I went for an attack that I did not need to do right now. Like that could totally happen. If you get impatient and play games impatiently, you lose to things that are silly and, and, and just kind of could have been easily avoided. <clears throat> a look at the worker count. Worker count's looking great. That was a drone window right there. We also scouted his base. And here's another drone window. We scouted his base and saw double stargates. We physically saw double stargates. Which means, again, he is tech switching. And tech switching, once again, is another reduction of your supply overall for build time of things and also cost of new buildings. So that means we can drone, e like we know for sure, like our roaches right now, if he does attack me with whatever he has, look at what he has. He has four zealots and two stalkers. He has 12 army supply. We still have 23 army supply. We know that his army supply sucks because of how late his natural was and how we also just confirmed that he's tech switching. These are things we keep talking about. There, there are things that we, that we know what his supply is because of that. Because again, I don't just... Think about Protoss and go, Protoss is 80. I don't just randomly throw a number out there. I go, what am I? I'm 98. Zerg already scales better than Protoss, so that's already a little bit of an edge right there. I also just defended a timing where he fucked his own economy up, and he's also tech switching now. That makes me feel like his supply sucks. Like that's that's all three of those factors make me give they give me like three pieces of a mystery that go, okay, well I can really get a good guess as where you're at now. Because again, I'm basing it off of mine as the initial, and what that has happened so far in this game. My, I am the I am the 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 curve here again of as to what is actually happening. And my build so far has been efficient. That that's how we're understanding where he is. And we get to fully saturated. And again, I called 80 supply for my opponent. I called 80 when I was maxed out. Mineral. And we maxed out, and he has 88. So, again, these are things where it's mental notes, right? 
you go, okay, well, Protoss is natural. Was thrown down like three minutes late. Protoss is natural was thrown down three minutes late. That's a big deal. That also, he's not making probes. He's tech switching and he failed a timing. These are things that you pick apart in your mind and you go, you still have to respect the fact that you should think your opponent is still going to play somewhat efficiently. I, I like if I was like, I'm expecting this guy to uh, right now when I max out, I think this guy is going to have no economy and somehow also 3000 minerals because he's not spending his money. No, don't fucking think about it like that. That is that's this is kind of silly. It doesn't make any sense. You should assume your opponent can handle spending the money that they have. But what you're, be you're what you're basing it off of is the money that they generate. And you can you can like money that they have is not a fact. Money that someone has is based off of how good they are at macroing, but money that they generate is a fact because workers in this game generate the same thing all the time. All you have to look at is how many they have. That's how you can tell what someone is. Generation is a fact. Spending is however good they are. That's a mystery. But you don't, but again, if you base it off of the generation, that is the range of, like, you know, if they're good at spending their money, based off of what they generate, that is the level of their, that could be the level of their skill. That is the good end of the range of their skill. If they don't spend their money very well, and they also don't generate very well, they could be on the bad end of that range. You know what I mean? Like, I hope, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, he has no third. He like again the reason why I really also was able to tell a good idea what his supply is is because I had a zergling at his third bases, both potential third bases, and he never attempted to take them. By the time I maxed, so I knew that this dude was two base economy ever since he took it, which is a very slow ramp of supply. Doesn't go very fast. And there you have it. Dead Protoss. Boom. <laughs> His build was... Um, well, here's the thing. A lot of people in low leagues play against weird builds and they get really confused. And they're like, wait, what is happening? Um, I don't know what to do now. I'm really glad I'm playing against weird builds because I think people in low leagues play weird builds more than they play standard builds. I've seen so many people just like not make drones for five minutes because they're like freaked out. I didn't mean to transfer a drone there that, again. I keep doing that. People just freak out about stuff because they don't understand. They're like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> efficiency. You base the game off of efficiency. You learn how to read efficiency. I'm, I'm, that's, that's the whole point of Platinum League is learning how to read efficiency. So like we understand efficiency for ourselves already. You should now at this point understand efficiency in your own build, but now that now we're taking it one step further and we're reading efficiency in our opponent's build based off of our own build. See, we're getting cannon rush now. That's fine. I don't give a fuck. Cannon rush me. Let's bring an overlord over here and let's see if he's going to really commit to it. The answer is yes. So let's go ahead and build a pool. Let's cancel this hatchery, and let's follow my drone to a new base, a new land. There's two probes, so he's pretty committed. So let's do this. I'm going to give you guys this reaction this time. This is a reaction I love doing to cannon rushers in my own games. Make drones. Just keep making drones for now. We're going to have our overlord go with our new drone to the new spot that we're making. This way we don't get cannon rushed by ninja shit and let the hatchery die as soon as it finishes. Saturate my gases, but don't undersaturate the mineral line yet. Okay? Do not undersaturate the mineral line yet. 
make a roach horn, make a queen, and now that our roach horn's done, now fully saturate the gases. This will give you a nice timer of well-rounded gas. And what we're going to do now too is right as the roach horn's about like 10 seconds of the way done, right about 10 seconds on the roach horn, spend your last larva and every larva that spawns now, save it. So when the, again, roach horn's at a 40 second build time, roughly 39. When the roach horn is one fourth of the way done, stop spinning your larva and let it sit on your hatchery. This way you have three larva right as it finishes because each larva spawns about every 10 seconds. And now what I'm going to do? We're going to make three roaches the second it's done. I'm not going to use my queen either. We're just going to make a creep tumor. Now on this base, let's go ahead and make one zergling because he's cannoning it. And now let's make drones. So one zergling will deal with this garbage and then we'll make drones. My overlord over here, scouts. That was a gateway that just finished. So there's no proxy. Like if, if anything, it's proxy zealots. That cyber core is so far away from being done. I am not afraid. Okay, keep making drones and keep making uh, overlords on my main base. And now I'll take my ravagers and go like this. Get them somewhere close and just go on the edge of the cannons like this, okay? Bile, bile, bile. And then don't move them in. That's all you do. Just bile away from him. Just try your best to like inject your hatcheries and shit. Bile, bile, bile. Keep making drones. Bile, bile, bile. And if you only hit one cannon, just know you can bile two at once if they're, if they're touching like this. So bile them in the center like that. Bile, bile, bile. And now both will get hit. Keep making drones. At 5 SD while you're doing this. Bile, bile, bile. We can spread a creep. What's going on now over here? Is there another cannon? Bile, bile, bile. Okay, let's go ahead and start a layer. Bile, bile, bile. Okay, we just unlocked our natural, so let's go down there and expand. Keep injecting my hatcheries. Let's make another queen as well, so we can uh, spread our creep and stuff like that. And we'll, uh, we'll retake our natural now. And let's look at the position that we're in right now. He has not started a natural, and let's look at our quote-unquote natural. It's fully saturated. Fully saturated, guys. Full saturation. This is a lead. We we can honestly look at the supply and go like this. I am 58. I have two bases. This dude failed a cannon rush. He is probably around 30. He's probably like half of my supply right now. He probably has a fully saturated base and at most like four units out of this one gateway that he has. So if we go into his base, let's see if he has four units or like three units or something. We see a one in the gateway and two already out. So it's going to be three units. And then if he has a fully saturated base, that would put him at 28. Now it would be 30. Now he canceled it. That's fine. Let's go ahead and make an overseer. Where is uh, overload? Let's make an overseer, boys. And let's also transfer some drones. Send one back. Rally all my hatcheries to the new base. And start spreading creep. We can even take another base. Because we're going to fully saturate our, our next base too pretty soon. And um, we are starting a Hydrogen. Even though we don't know what he's doing yet. We're starting a Hydrogen just in case we need it. Because he might go air. Who knows? Let's make some creep timbers. We just injected our bases. Inject them again. Inject. You inject that base. And this Overseer is going to go confirm for us. You know, what's going down. Changeling is going to the natural. Overseer is going straight to the main. Hydrogen is done. Get upgrades on him. And what's he doing? If he doesn't have a natural still, let's just start making hydras. If he does have a natural, we can saturate more. He doesn't have a natural still. Make hydras. We're going to get like all in again. Another thing we can do right now. And look, it's it's fucking fleet beacon. And look at the pro look at the probe count. Okay, so this is a big deal, right? Look at the probe count. Do you think this guy has been mining with like 12 probes? 
on every patch this whole time and he's mined that much? My answer to that is fuck no. I guarantee there's a hidden base now. He recalled his probe somewhere. So let's shift a move the map for all potential hidden bases. Looking at someone's economy tells them so tells you so much information. So now this guy is actually not one basing me. He could be two or three basing me based off of how greedy he's being. But if I find these hidden bases, I guarantee I can kill these hidden bases. And look at the hidden base. Let's set, let's take my whole army except for this one or there's another one. Hi. Let's go ahead and uh, a move my army now. We found two hidden bases. Send my army down to the bottom one first. Just pick one and go kill it. Let's go ahead and make creep. Creep, creep, creep. And now that we have a good, we have a nice, decently sized army, we're not fully saturated yet. Because we thought he might have been one base, but now we know he's not. Let's go back and make drones. Because we just logically broke that down. We're like, okay, he's actually not one base along me still. He went three base, hidden base. So guaranteed with the army we just made, we can go kill those. But now we can go back to like 80, 80 to 85 drones and then make army again. Now we can also fix our economies wherever we see it's oversaturated. Make a new base. And drone count is still great. Do some creep spreading. Creep spread. Creep spread. Put another tumor up here. Grab like six drones and put them on uh, our gases. And keep making hydras. A move my whole army up to the top now. All of it. Go top. And now I guarantee, I guarantee this Protoss, if he doesn't quit the game right now, I guarantee he is retaking his natural. So that is going to be the next location we go. Or he's just going to suicide <laughs> with probes. That also works. Look at our money. It's a bit high. Let's make two hatcheries. When games get awkward, your money's going to probably get higher more often. You can totally just throw down some macro hatches when that happens. Okay, let's go to the top right, kill this base. Keep injecting my bases. Get ready to go into a hive so we make an infestation pit. Do I have upgrade? Did I ever start upgrades? I don't think I did. So we can make two Evo chambers. GG. Okay, let's go to his natural. I, um, realistically, I'm just going to throw this out there. If you ever cannon, if someone ever cannon rushes you and they don't make immortals or stalkers to back it up and you make ravagers the way we did, you will kill every cannon rush, no matter what map it is the same way. It's just, I'm not going to tell this guy that because I don't care. It's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rain on his parade, but that is what it means. That is how it works. A move is mean. Go upgrades, get hive. And we just look at our economies and be like, good. Good economy. Not a good economy. Fix it. And send probes or drones somewhere else. So on and so on. So, so now, let's really quickly look at the opener of this game again. This three Ravager thing, I think Platinum players, if you're Platinum, I would say you could do this. This is basic. Again, I have always said, I don't think you should start microing until Diamond League. But I will say you can do very basic micro shit in Platinum. Like very basic. Like siege a tank. Fucking turn on a Guardian Shield. Things like that. Like, like hitting a button and calling it a day. And with Ravagers, all it is is hitting a Corrosive Bile on the edge of the cannon. You don't actually... Micro the Ravagers in or out, you just literally go corrosive bile and you're done. And you come back to it like eight seconds later and do it again. You're not microing against zealots, you're not microing against stalkers, you're not microing against immortals. Prob like you're most likely not gonna be dealing with that shit right now. Uh, most of the time when people get, most of the people that you're gonna deal with that will do shit like that will be Masters League. 
maybe diamond. So we don't cancel the hatchery until he actually builds a cannon. That's also an important fact. If you get cannon rushed, if you're the guy who cancels your hatchery to a pylon, don't ever do that. Because if you cancel your hatchery to a pylon, and he actually went gateway first or nexus first, you actually just fuck yourself over so bad. Because you don't really know what he's doing yet until he makes that cannon. But he, a Protoss cannot make a cannon unless they make a forge. So this cannon is scouting information that tells you he made a forge. And if he makes a cannon this fast, he didn't make a gateway. Because this is a he made the cannon like when my hatchery just started. Timers. Understanding timers again. That's uh, understanding time of builds. And again, just to clarify, uh, make sure you guys know this fact. This is this is like probably the key here. This is the most important one for if you're doing this successfully. The goal is is was as soon as the roach warren is done, you want to have three roaches starting immediately. You do not, however, want to have larva sitting there forever and cutting out like two drones out of your build. That's also bad. So here's how this goes, okay? This is how the build goes. We know we're getting cannon rushed, for sure. And we're deciding, you know what? Let's go Ravager route to deal with this. So we make double gas. And the reason why we do this is so he cannot block my gas. Because if he blocks my gas, we're fucked. You cannot afford Ravagers like this on one gas. You need two gases. So we take double gas. We do not, however, saturate double gas with any of our 16 drones until we start the roach warren because otherwise we're going to have like 400 gas when we start our roaches and it's going to be not enough minerals to do everything it's going to be way too ex like you know expensive uh so we need the minerals minerals are still the priority so far so we the pool finishes we start a queen and we start a roach warren simultaneously queen roach warren and now we can saturate the gas and now we want to spin the larva until, this is the timer, until our Roach Warren is at about 10 seconds of the way done, about 25% of the progress, we will spend our larva until then. And as soon as the, the progress bar of the Roach Warren is about there, we will stop all usage of larva, don't use any more, and we will save it now because the rest, everything to the right of that progress bar is how long it takes for three more larva to spawn. The only thing we want to make sure that happens, though, is if your supply is like this, which I guarantee it will be, unless you made an overlord at like 19, you want to make an overlord with one of your last larva so that you don't only have 22 supply out of 20 out of 22 by the time you have three larvae sitting there, because then obviously your supply blocked. So you want to be at like uh, you want to have a supply cushion to where you can make three roaches. Each roach is two supply. So this last larva should be an overlord. And... Or I have two larvae right there. And again, see, I did say you can spin larva up until 10 seconds. So if there's already a larva sitting here, you can spin it. If it's already sitting there, you can spin it. And we made one more drone and an overlord. Right at 10 seconds, though, stop spinning larva. Now, from now on, like I said, the rest of the progress bar, three larvae will spawn. One larva per 10 seconds. So it times out perfectly. <clears throat> and now it's going to give us 21 out of 30 supply. <clears throat> and now we just wait. We just literally wait. There's nothing we can do. Don't make drones anymore. And then Roachhorn finishes. And look at the larva. A third larva just spawned. The Roachhorn just finished. Three roaches. And what the, the reason why this is important for you guys to know this is it takes... Five corrosive vials to kill a cannon. And if we have three Ravagers, we can shoot two rounds of corrosive bile and kill a cannon. If we only have two Ravagers, we have to shoot three rounds of corrosive bile to kill a cannon. These are things that make a big difference in time and efficiency because if we have to wait a whole other cooldown to kill a cannon, that's not very efficient. Because also, every time we have to wait for another cooldown of corrosive bile, the cannon starts regenerating a little bit of shields. So 
the less efficient you are with it, the more likely the cannon will last longer and longer and longer. And if, he, the, if the Protoss is doing... Like, time is a valuable resource in StarCraft. So if the Protoss is doing something that... Um, you know, is something you need to deal with in a, ne in a decent amount of time, it just puts you further and further behind the longer you delay and wait on shit. So yeah, three, ro three roaches is all you need. You don't need to make five, you don't need to make four, just make three, because it makes two rounds of bile, cannon dies. Two rounds of bile, cannon dies. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Another thing that's really important is when you get cannoned and you cancel your hatchery, always send your drone outside of your base to take another base. Because I will tell you guys right now, if I did not have this base and this Protoss walled me in like this with cannons on the ramp, I would not be in the greatest position. I, I wouldn't be in a bad position, but I would only be in a position that's good if I microed. Because here's how it would work. I could still kill my cannons in my base defensive like the cannons that he has in, the, in my base. I could still kill them defensively with Ravagers. Easy. But if I didn't have an expansion and I allowed myself to be walled into my main, the only way I would get ahead in this game and not be tied with him is if I then walked my Ravagers across the map and crucified his ramp with my Ravagers, which is very fucking distracting. Because my natural would be insanely late, just like his is. So always try to keep a drone out there and make your overlord follow it for shit like this. Oh, I can see you cannoning me. Hi. I'll make a, just one zergling to kill your probe because the cans aren't even started yet. Suddenly the lings pop and then just fuck the probe up and then it's over. How many biles kill a pylon? Well, you have to just do the math. A, a bile does 60 damage and a pylon has 400 hit points. So if you do the math, it's seven. If you do it perfectly, and you don't, and the pylon doesn't really regenerate, five kills a cannon, seven kills a pylon. And now look at resources lost. And you guys remember what I said? We did say when we compared his lack of natural to our fully saturated natural, we said that he was going to be about half of our supply. When we were at 60, we said he was going to be at about 30. And then we were talking about gateway count units. These are estimations you will get better at when you really think about the game logically like this. He is literally at 30 supply. And once again, it doesn't always have to be exact. Just have an understanding as to what is a good ballpark. What makes sense. And then watch probes get recalled out of his base. He recalls out like half the mineral line. So that's why that's another thing again right there where you're like, wait, what? How could you have mined so many minerals so fast? Like, why are these patches looking kind of tiny right now? And this is what you had? Like, if, if, I be if I truly believed this was your probe count, it's like you didn't make a single probe all, all game almost. Things like that are important to know. Like, you, you can read shit like that. It makes, it makes you understand what's capable and what's not. It makes you think about things that are happening uh, that, you know, that are going on in the game. And then, again, what would a... If he doesn't have a natural or a third, what would a... Uh, a, a like a, a recall... What, what, would, what would it mean if I was like, where are your, why are your probes missing? Obviously, it means he's got a hidden base. So we scouted for hidden bases and we found both of them in both corners of the map. Also, just throwing this out there, this is another fact too that makes this... Uh, it'll make this... Um, understandable i guess for people to know if if this protoss player uh if, if i didn't think to myself oh god why are your probes so low what are you doing if i didn't think that was happening and i just didn't even pay attention to that if i didn't even pay attention at all to the mineral line 
I would still have scouted the map for all the bases, base, 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 with like two units as soon as I hit optimal drone saturation and like one set, like what I am now, like 160, 170 supply. It would have been scouted either way because I want to know where his most exposed base is to attack. And if he's still on one base, if he literally is still just on one base at this point, then I go to his main and go kill him. And that's fine. That's it. So that's it, boys. You guys learning? You learning? You learning? Hmm. Alright, we got a ZBZ. Vibe, I'm learning Zerg, and I was hoping to find like a definitive guide to defending Cannon Rush, but there are a lot of beginner videos out there that don't help me too much. Got any resources? Uh, just watch the series. I defended Cannon Rush earlier too. Literally, what I just did that game is honestly probably the easiest way to defend Cannon Rush. I'm not gonna lie. That's probably the easy. Like if did what I just did last game for the Cannon Rush defend part. Like, practice that, and you'll be like, wow, Cannon Rushes are a joke. So easy. We require more minerals. Throw everything from my old series away. My old series has a lot of good points, but literally I the new series, just use the new series. Stop using the old series. I've had a lot, I've, I've literally have, I have lit, literally had people come to my stream being like, Vibe, I, I thought you told us to do a roach attack. What the fuck is this? Like, dude, that was a year ago. And this is a more refined version of it. It's updated. It's patched. It's new. It doesn't, everything that I did before doesn't apply now. Always. <laughs> okay, double overlord. Yo, thank you for the uh for the sub, Mr. Hungry. Uh vibe love you. Keep up the great work, friend. Thank you, dude. Also, uh, safety scissors, thank you for the bits. Much love, much love. Thanks, boys. Okay, guys, he's got a natural, right? He's got a natural. That's fine. Now, here's what we're doing. We don't need to make a spine now. We're fine. But here's what we're doing. We made four lings, and this is for the purpose, again, of scouting. I'm going to do this. One ling go down here. Shift click up here, and then shift into the main. I want it to go here first because it's going to wrap around really close to the ramp and go in as fast as possible. We're just sending one ling. This is going to tell us if we're getting all in. I'm going to get you in the habit of using your lings to scout. And we also have overlord placement. One overlord is going to his third and also the other exit of his base. Look at the ling for a second. Where are lings here? Make drones. Roach Warren. Cool. And a lair. He's doing the same build I'm doing, essentially. His Roach Warren's really early though, so it's not as efficient as mine. He definitely had to cut Larva to do that. That is a guaranteed Larva cut right there. Let's go ahead and send another Zergling over there. Uh, round two Zergling. And again, when I say his build's not as efficient as mine, I'm basing it off of my own build. 
I am barely able to maintain my economy with my larva. And I just started my Roach Warren and I looked at his and it was like 50% of the way done or 60% of the way done. That is a, how you can scout that. That's how you can go, oh, what the fuck? Okay, well, yeah, you definitely can't afford that, but you did, so your economy is just inefficient. We require more minerals. Things like that make a lot of sense if you look at it that way. So there's a drone in his main. I know there's a drone in my main, guys. It doesn't matter. It meant nothing. It all it, all that did to me was it said he's even more inefficient because he has a fucking wasted drone. <laughs> it didn't matter at all. We require more because I'm gonna tell you the reason why it didn't matter is because he already missed the window for a spine crawler proxy all in, with like drone pull ling push. That hap that window was like two minutes ago. So I don't give a shit if a drone just sits in my main. Now we're just making roaches up until we have like eight. Once again, let's go ahead and send a zergling into his base. We can pull this overlord a little bit back. And uh, let's start making drones. We'll start. We don't have to continue making drones all the time, but we'll start. And we'll also, the way we're going to base this is off of our scout. What do we see? Fully saturated natural. More drones. Cool. I'm fucking fine with making drones then. I don't give a shit. Now let's take our last ling and get ready to move it out in like 30 seconds. Inject, inject, inject. Make my stuff. Ling can go in again. And this time, let's scout the third base with our Zergling, and let's also send our uh, Overseer. A Changeling into his natural, and our Overseer can go into the main. Drone, 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 drone. Let's make a Hydroden for now, a second Evo, and a final gas. Inject, inject, inject. Three drones for that, three drones for this to fix them. And what's going on? Decent saturation, Roach Hydra. And good saturation still. Okay, so we're both doing the same exact build. We can, and also we know we're ahead because his third saturation, guys, I'm just going to throw this out there, is not as good as mine. It's it's coming along, but he doesn't even have gases going yet. And this mineral line is like probably 15. Ours has been fully saturated. Oh, we have 15. Now we have 16. I made the drone to go there. That's why. My point is, is I don't think I'm massively ahead. But we did saturate a little bit quicker than he did. Just a bit. Inject. 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 Okay, let's run our changeling in his base again. Let's see if he's changing up his tech at all. Meanwhile, we're both tied on economy. Let's go ahead. And ZVZ is a little bit scarier now in Platinum. P people are going to probably start doing a little bit more proper builds here. So what we're going to do is we're not going to go to 80 drones now. We're going to stop around like 66, 67. And we're going to make army. If I go to 80 drones, it could kill me. It seems pretty scary. Let's go ahead and make a Lurker Den just to make this super standard for us. Oh yeah, Plat Platinum is like, people start having a, a like a base understanding of the game, so... Getting away with 80 drones in ZVZ anymore is kind of kind of cutting it scary, like it's close. We can still start a fourth base. If he if he takes, and he's droning his fourth. So check this out, okay? Watch this. He is saturating his fourth base. I don't think you should do this anymore in ZVZ. In ZVT and in ZVP, I think you should. But in ZVZ, you should stop. Now watch this, okay? Get, get ready, boys. Just transfer your drones. The main reason why we also take the fourth base is so we can transfer our drones to it. That mine out. That's another two. And we are maxed at 827. Get an overlord, turn into an overseer, and let's go attack. Get upgrades. Upgrades. We have level 2 carapace on the way. We have level 2 weapons almost done. And uh, 
Lurker Din's done, but we, we're supply blocks, so or we're max, so we're not gonna be able to make lurkers yet. It's fine. Group my army up in front of his base. And let's go kill his newest, or hold on, let my army group up. And let's go kill his newest base. We can shift they move this base, shift they move that base, shift they move that base. Okay, back at home. Let's go ahead and do this, okay? We're making hydras until we're out of gas. And now, do this shit right here. One, two, three, four. This is in case we lose our army. It's going to prepare us for a counterattack, and this is, it'll make sense in a second. One, two, three, four. Two entrances to my main part of my base has now been covered by spines. We're still making hydras. We're going to grab some of our existing hydras now and make lurkers. So now if we get attacked, if we lose our army and we get attacked, we are going to be able to fall back on a little bit of static D and lurker. And it makes sense because this guy and myself are both going massive ground units. We're not doing mutas or some shit like that. We're going ground units. So rewind it. Let's go back. So now we understand we understand efficiency, right? Everyone everyone should understand efficiency. But now when players of Zerg caliber when two when you get two Zerg players who both understand efficiency. If one player makes 80 drones and the other player makes 66, the player who makes like 66 is going to have a timing to kill the player who makes 80. And this is why. This is why this happens. This only happens in ZVZ. Whenever I have told you guys, when you play against a Terran and a Protoss, you should by default always have a higher supply than your opponent. Because you can max out faster with Zerg. The same thing applies in Zerg versus Zerg. And you do not actually need 80 drones to max on Roach Hydra, Roach Ravager, something like that. You do not need 80 drones to do that for the first time. The reason why 80 drones is so good for that is because it allows you to remax, remax, remax over and over. It gives you a bank to work with every time you lose supply. But... If you go to 80 drones in ZVZ and your opponent stops at 3 base, which is 66, what could happen is, is they will crush your fucking army faster than you're ready for it because you drone too hard. And then their push just happens to kill you entirely. It's kind of just how it goes. So we'll talk about this. And yeah. My point is, this is, this is my point. You will not max out faster the first time against a Zerg opponent if one player stops at 66 and one player stops at 80. To be honest, the player who stops at 66 will max out faster the first time because they will make units that are more supply heavy uh, harder, faster. They'll make it faster. I like ZVZ so much, it's my best matchup. Ooh, nice. And nice. So we're scouting. Uh, we actually just saw two drones on the minimap. That's not needed. <laughs> That's a mistake, obviously. Dun, dun, dun. So, okay, we see a natural, right? We see a natural. We made four lings, and these four lings are going to be something we're going to be doing from now on. And it's going to make a lot more sense as we get to actually using Zergling styles. It, they'll even be more useful then. But for now, the four lings are literally just for scouts. This will help us find a lot of all ins that could potentially happen. Like, for instance, here's an example. If this dude was going for a super big heavy speedling all in and let's say he went hatchery gas pool he mined 100 gas and then stopped mining gas altogether and he was just making ling 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 
like just masslings in his mane. There's a very high chance we would have discovered that right now. And if we would have discovered that right now, we can deal with it a lot better in a way that would be like, we can make a spine and we could also make a wall and get ready to make roaches faster because he's going all in. But we can clearly see he's not doing that. He's going for a layer, he's going for a roach horn, and he's going for a gas. So that's also a lot of information. Yo, plenty, plenty. Thank you for the seven months. Welcome back. Thank you, dude. But look at this roach horn. Okay, look at this. Again, this roach horn is 20 sec it's 27 seconds of the way done. 27. Okay. And with that being said, look at our roach horn. It's not even started yet. Our roach horn should be starting any second now, though. But let's look at larva. Okay. And let's look at money overall. We have a Zerg opponent right now who... Did, wait, did he kill my Overlord? Where the fuck did my Overlord die? Or is, his, is it his Overlord? Wait, what? He's blue. What am I talking about? Jesus. Sorry. It's there. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I'm so confused. Uh, anyways. Um, this Roach Warren's just, it's just... It is very early, so I guarantee when he threw it down, there were larvas sitting there. If we back it up and we look at this... Look at look at the larva right now. There's none currently. But let's look at when he makes it, okay? He makes the roach warren right now. He makes it before even starting a layer. <laughs> larva is still getting spent with automated larva up to this point. His automated larva is still roughly getting spent. The inject pops off the hatchery. And I want you guys to look at the larva really fast. This Roach Warren has thrown off the build a little bit in a way where it's things like, for instance, things like making overlords. Th uh, having the Roach Warren uh, way too early and also, does he have a third queen? He has it, but yeah, he was supply block forever. My point is, that I'm trying to make here, is um, it seems less impactful than it is because you guys see his money right here and you're like, well, Vibe, he could make seven drones right now out of that nine larva. And if he made seven drones, that would be the same as what you have, but I could also spend my last two larva to make my last drones. But making this Roach Warren right now, when he, when he did, it does deviate things like he can't afford everything. This is a big cost because he takes one drone out of his build to mine minerals with for th this drone could have been mining for the last like 25 seconds, which is like 25 minerals in itself. Plus it's a 150 mineral extra cost into the build. But let's look at just something else for fun. Look at when the Roach Warren's done. It's, it's done at, we'll just round it off to 320 to make it easy. 320. The layer is not done for another 37 seconds. So that means he cannot even start Zerglings or Roach speed for another 37 seconds. This is way too fucking early. And then on top of that, let's look at production and see if he wants to start making Roaches right now before he's even fully saturated. Again, this is going to cause problems in his up upkeep of everything and it's going to make us pull ahead of him. This is way too early. Look at the supply already. Did you guys expect, do you guys expect this, this supply to be this different already? If he spent four drones, he would still be behind by four supply. Production tab does not show roaches yet. Still no roaches. I'm glad he doesn't make roaches yet, because he shouldn't be. It's just that Roach Warren was way too fast. And look, we uh, the funny thing is, this is the funny part. Building your, your build inefficiently like this, this Roach Warren has been done for over a minute now. It's been done for exactly one minute and four seconds. Because it was 319 when it finished. There has been nothing that has been done with this Roach Warren since it has, has been done. There has not been a single Roach and no upgrades. And all it has done, it has it, it 
is it has set his build further behind because it was built way too early. The earlier in the build, the, the earlier in the game something happens, the more it severely fucks your economy up. If it hiccups the rest of your stuff. Like you can't just squeeze in an extra expense and be like, it's going to still work. It's going to cause problems that ripple throughout the economy after that. Everything else is going to get delayed here and there, here and there. So having it be thrown down too early was definitely now causing him to be further behind than we are. Like he's not even really missing inject or the queen of the main is, but the queen of the natural is not missing injects. I think he may have been, it may have been from being supply blocked and having minerals to do it. That is also part of it, but I'm telling you right now. Okay. I want you guys to understand this logic. Understand the logic. If your build in terms of efficiency is able to spend every mineral. And even then you have to wait sometimes for your larva for like two seconds. And then you can spend your next larva on a drone. If that's how your build works and that is efficiency, you don't just suddenly squeeze in 150 mineral roach warren and lose one of your drones to do it and then say that that's still efficient. Because I am telling you right now, doing a standard build, like doing the build that we're doing, the standard way, we don't have the ability every time to spend every larva the millisecond it's out. Sometimes we do have to wait for like three seconds to spend that third larva that spawned off the inject or something like that. We do have to wait a little bit here and there to get that larva spent. But the big key is, is we're spending it still as fast as we can. So it is still efficient. Having an expense like that means that that efficiency gets set back a bit. It, there's no way you can argue that point. No one can argue that point. It is less efficient. Building a roach horn when you're not even fully able to utilize all your larvae yet is inefficiency. The perfect time to build it is after you start your layer, not like 20 seconds before. I don't know how to explain that any other way. I, it's just that that's just a fact. It literally... If you don't agree with me, then the fuck, you're going to be the guy who's always behind in supply. <laughs> and then, uh, so from here, you know, we're going back to our vision now. So we're scouting him again with our periodic links. We just saw his natural looks like ours. We also saw he was making drones. This is a big deal. This is something we are going to have, uh, this is something we're going to have a lot in our ZVZs. This is something that is going to, like, this is the beginnings of master's level scouting. Okay? Grand master level scouting, even. This is very basic, because we're just kind of, like, sending it in. We're not even trying to save the link whenever it sees shit. We're just being like, go suicide and find some shit out. But seeing something as simple as, in ZVZ, okay? Seeing something like this. Let's back it up to when the link got there. These are important things to look at in ZVZ. Okay. You guys ready? Number one. Queen energy. That will tell us if we are ahead or behind. That is one way to dictate who has more larva. Let's look at his queen. His, his Like you can look at the box too. He's got like one little box. And the hatchery is not injected. Which means if we injected it, the box would be gone. So this queen is injecting up to this point fine. It seems fine. It doesn't seem bad. It seems like this player is injecting properly. This queen doesn't matter on the ramp because that is definitely an extra queen. That also tells us that he has three queens, but so do we. So who cares? It's pretty standard. The, the, the difference is, is his queen didn't make any tumors and ours did. And otherwise it would be the exact same thing. So queen, ener queen energy is a big one. Secondly is current larva and eggs on the hatchery. You should pay attention to how many eggs are there and how much larva is there. The more larva that is there, the more potential that you, that is scary that you're like, okay, this could be anything. He like, why, if your opponent ever has more than three larva sitting on their hatchery and every number, it goes above that. You have to ask yourself, why the fuck are you saving larva? Why? Like, what's the point? And a lot of times in ZVZ, I'm just going to throw this out there. When someone saves larva like that, a lot of times it's because they're about to do a roach timing. 
because you can make zerglings, you can make drones, you can make all of these things on the fo- like on the spot, on the spot, on the spot. And if you make these things as soon as they're ready to go, you don't larva cap, so you generate larva efficiently. But the only thing that can happen early game that someone could do, and we know he also had a roach warren. Also, we saw the layer too, so this kind of rules out a roach timing, like an early all-in roach timing. But the only thing Zerg can do that cannot spend its larva as soon as you have queens out is roaches. And if someone is going to do a roach timing, very likely they're going to have larvas going, just stocking up on the hatchery. So paying attention to larva, if it's, if it's a lot and it's early, like for instance, okay, this would be a, this would be a way to read this. Lots of larvae on this hatchery. Lots of drones on that mineral line. Roach, like the roach all in, just throw that shit in the garbage. It no longer applies. Why? Because he's got a lot of drones. He's invested into an economy. He's not all inning me. But let's just say this was like my first Zergling. And my, let's say my, my natural had like 15 drones on it. And his natural had three. Three drones. And I see like six larvae. And they all just go just in eggs. And I'm like, okay. That looks fucking suspicious. Like, what do you think it's going to be? Most likely you're about to get all in by some bullshit like roaches. And maybe a ling flood behind it. It makes a lot of sense. Like, just comparing worker count and comparing and also looking at larva, that's a big deal. And then we, we even, and then if you're lucky enough, you don't, this doesn't always happen, but if you're lucky enough, you will also see what pops out of the eggs like that. And we saw drones. That reinforces it even more. That makes me go, oh, cool. He's making drones. Let's go ahead and slam out a round of drones. Here comes my drone count. One drone. <laughs> Pretty sure I make more. But yeah. And we probably don't have larva. How much larva do I have? I have two larva now. But yeah, we, we were... There we go. There's the, there's the larva slam. Seeing those drones makes us safe to slam drones ourselves. You just know you're fine. That's why Ling Scouts are important. So again, we're comparing resource lines. And we're also looking at larva. And the more drones he has... if, if we're Because again, here's the thing. If we're making mass drones and we scout mass drones, if he doesn't know that I'm going mass drones, but I know he is, only one of us actually understands who's playing safely. And the other one... who, If you're making mass drones and you have no idea what your opponent has, you're playing risky. Because for all you know... You could have just spent the last 25 larvae on drones and your opponent could have spent it on zerglings and banelings. And you could just die. So, periodi periodic ling scouts are important. And now we look at the third base. Once again, let's look at his third. We see a third mineral line that doesn't look too crazy. He just started his gases and he's got a decent amount of drones on it. I would like if I had to guesstimate, I would honestly guesstimate this without counting it. I would be like roughly around half, which is eight. This looks like roughly around half. Like all the patches look like they have about one drone on them. So when you think that and you go back and look at yours, look at mine, three, three, 16. That is a lead right there. That tells me I have been more efficient with larva. If this guy has still been making drones the whole time, this tells me I have a nice lead on him on, on economy. I should be mining more than he is. And he's still making drones in my face. So I also know he hasn't been pulling up roaches for a little while. He's still making drones. He's just behind in terms of the, the macro game. We're both trying to go to full saturation. It's just he's behind. It could also mean he has a bigger army. Yes, but I, what I just said was, if we see him making drones, he is not making roaches. <laughs> and now look at this, okay? Look at this. Our opponent is still making, uh, or he's making a little bit of roaches right now, but he go he does go back to droning before he's done. Because he did have a fourth base of drones. There you go. He's going back to droning now. 
I am telling you right now, in ZvZ, both players can max out just as fast as each other, no matter how many drones you make, if they both hit 66. So our, my opponent's drone count is 70. We're at 67. He's actually not going too crazy, but look at what uh, look at our max though. We're already maxed out, and our opponent is at 166. This again, this this isn't because I thought he made more drones than this. To be honest, I thought he was actually going to go to 80, but uh, this is really just because of it's it just it's just efficiency. It's just being able to be efficient with your units, and uh, that's really it. He drones again, though. He does keep droning a little bit. Actually, you know what? We both actually maxed out when um, the first fight happened. Okay. Well, that, you know, that, that happened. I, I was expecting... Uh, honestly, I, I thought I won this... Because I didn't look at this fight. I was thinking I won this fight because he made too many drones. Because he actually saturated a fourth base a bit, it looked like. Uh, but yeah, okay. Well, let's just see how the fight goes. Like It looks like we just took a better... Our, 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 uh, our army just had a better engagement overall. Is he missing army supply or something? That seems weird. His army, honestly, had a... Uh, I guess that's... Okay, well, that's why. I'm just kidding. I was like, his army actually split better than mine did. But this is why. It's concave size. Look at his... Con like, this is a small fight. I was like, I'm just losing hydras up here. This is pretty shitty. And he's got roaches in the front line with hydras behind. This is this is proper for, uh, for Zerg, the way he has it right there. We just kind of A-moved it. But here's the thing. This is this is only like one fourth of the army. This is a very small portion of the army. This is what really decides the army. And even though I have some of my army killing his hatchery and eggs and shit like that, we have a bigger concave than he does, and we're getting more efficiency out of this fight the whole time. Our concave stretches wider than his does. Which is why that fight went so well for us. So we had more we had more uptime of more DPS than he did. So we we're just getting better trades. And then this is how ZVZ kind of goes. In Zerg vs Zerg, if you ever lose a big fight defensively, it ca it literally just it keeps running your base over until you die. That's how ZVZ goes, which is why I was saying it's not the best idea to go to 80 drones in ZVZ. Because if I go to 80 drones in ZVZ and I max, and we're, we're both making the same units, okay? We're both making Roach, Roach Ravager, or Roach Hydra. Yet, for whatever reason now, well, the drone reason, my opponent has an extra 14 army supply over me. Well, if it's a mirror match, we're probably going to, like, if he's got 14 more army supply than I do, and it's the exact same army, he's probably going to trade a little bit better than I am on, on average. He might not if he fucks up the micro, but he will usually trade better than I will. And as soon as that army trades in a way where like it kind of rolls over one of your armies, suddenly it just starts rolling all your bases over. And then it is, it's like impossible to recover in ZBZ if you like lose your control and then your bases start getting popped one by one and your drones start dying. The game just ends then. So that's what, that is why I literally say 66 drones, roughly around 66. Don't go below that. Try your best. Like any, I would say anywhere between 66 to 70 is okay but 66 is perfect because it's three base full saturation you can squeeze out more drones later on once you have lurkers in zvz once i got to this stage if i would have had like four spines four spines like a lurker a lurker let's make another four spines a lurker then i could drone up to like 80 drones and that would actually be okay and what i could do then is i could literally stop making roaches altogether. And I could just go Hydra Lurker, Viper, or something. That would be fine. Because then I would also be... If more drones would mean I could make more Static D. And I could afford it. And not have it really, like, fuck up my economy that much. Because I'd have, like, more money to spend on... The extra money could go on things like Spine Crawlers. So my base is more fortified. And I'm not making worse units anymore, like Roaches. You could do that, too. 
Or you could be the guy who just makes Master Roach Ravager all game and just attacks the whole time. People are in GM who do that. I will do that sometimes in Diamond League when I'm uh, showing you guys builds and stuff. But, or maybe even Plat. But yeah, that does happen a lot too. We're not, by the way, we're not using Viper. We're, I'm not telling you to use Viper in Platinum. Not yet. Di Viper is uh, definitely like bare minimum Diamond. Probably just Masters though. I'm just saying that's what we could do. Those are ideas that could evolve the build further. <clears throat> but again, the, the efficiency rule of making 80 drones in ZVZ, it did not matter in gold, silver, or bronze. And the reason why it did not matter is because players cannot punish you properly in those leagues. Because their macro is so far off of being good that it doesn't matter. Seriously. It just didn't make it. It doesn't make a difference. But now that we're in plat, I. Like, platinum is the first league where you start respecting people a little bit. In terms of, like, if that person has somewhat of an idea what they're doing, they can. They can macro to a point to fuck you over if you do things that are crazy. So you gotta respect it a little bit. Okay. So, uh, guys, guys, we are uh, doing the same opener again against the Terran. Good stuff. Doing good stuff. Sounded harsh there. What do you mean? Like, like I was mean to the lower, lower, lower level players. It's tr pretty true though, if that's what we're talking about. Like players in gold and below literally cannot macro. Like that that is always why they're there. Is because their uh their efficiency is just non existent. It's a it's not there. It does not exist. Like for instance, shit like going two barracks, a factory, a starport, a fusion core, and then making a command center. Like what the hell is that? <laughs> it's crazy is what that is. Vibe, you're going to do bio builds for Terran. We'll see. We'll talk about that in Terran videos more. But we'll see. Also, yeah, if you're talking about making bio before diamond, fuck no. Don't ever do that. That's bad. Okay. Let the Lings attack the Reaper. Keep making drones while it's happening. And then as soon as he runs away from creep, run back to creep. Do not chase the reaper. Don't chase that shit. Keep staying away. Now the queen's out, so we're fine. Okay, so now is the time to build a roach worm. Our layer's going up pretty well. Keep spinning those droney boys. We require more minerals. We require and make a Evo chamber. Make it there. Again, placement is in front of our base this time. With uh Hellions, okay. Placement's in front of our base this time with um Evos and stuff. Let's go ahead and take two gases. And get ready to take our third base very soon. Inject, inject, get ready for a creep tumor, get a roach speed upgrade, get a weapon upgrade on roaches, take another creep tumor, and let's take a second evo chamber, because we know he's going hellions, we saw it with our overlord, okay this is just bad, 
And now let's uh, take our third. Lings can come back. So here's what these lings are gonna do, okay? And look, look at that queen, beautiful. Make roaches, boys. Make like eight roaches. So inject. That's why we make the wall, guys. He tried to just go in and roast my drones. That is why we make a wall. So four lings, I'm gonna go one all the way on the top side of the map and I'm gonna sit at his third base. The other one go to the bottom side of the map and I'm gonna sit at his other third base. The only other base he could take now is the forward one. And we're not gonna worry about that right now because our overlord kind of tells us that too. I can see the patches. We must place that on creep. Okay, actually let's make an overseer at this point. We wanna know what tech he's going into now. So we're going back to droning. Okay, the reaper is going to kill my ling on top. That's whatever. Let's make another queen. And now let's go scout his base. More marines. That's a sign that there's more barracks. There's a third command center. Starport. Double reactor. Okay, so it looks like marine tank medevac. Okay. Marine tank medevac. Keep making my my boys. We're actually supply blocked really hard right now. We didn't make overlords. That's really bad. It's okay though. It'll be okay. This time we're gonna do a different style. We don't have to go mutiling every time we see this. This time we're gonna go for lurker uh, lurker hydra roach. Just keep making efficient economy. We kind of deviated a little bit right there. We had a little bit of a hiccup with our supply block, but. It's not that big of a deal. It wasn't that long. Keep making drones. Because he has a third command center, we can get away with drones right now. And we saw it with our overlord. Now he's making a fourth command center. We can get away with even more drones. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Spread some creep. More creep. Go to the top. Spread that creep. Spread that creep. 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 And good. Make another tumor there later. Okay, drones. We're just about done. And again, we can do this because he made a fourth command center as well. Like, that's a lot. Okay, now we start making hydras. And let's make an infestation pit. Because if we're going to go lurker style, we need to go, honestly, for a pretty decently timed hive. Inject. 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 Creep. This hellion's going to fuck my creep spread up a little bit. Make overlords. Creep. 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 Put some boys on that gas. Take another base, honestly. Inject, inject, inject. And creep spread again. Creep, make hydras. Creep, 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 creep. Drone count's a little bit lower because we made some buildings, so we just made some more to fix it again. And we'll be back at 82. And yeah, we're, uh, we're looking pretty good, guys. Let's go ahead and start adding some static D to our buildings. Because now, it's kind of like how we do with Archons, with Protoss. We're making something that costs a lot of gas and not a lot of minerals. We're making Lurkers. So we're making three drones, replacing them. Or we're making three static D structures, and then replacing three drones on that base. Inject, 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 make three static D structures, replace the drones on that base. Spore, spine, spine. Two spine, one spore. So our, our, this time around, our composition is a little bit more expensive, so we're not going to max as fast. That's just how it works. It's a little bit more expensive. And let's get the upgrades for lurkers here in just a second. Transfer some drones. I have to be hive to get these upgrades, by the way. I'm going to go creep. Creep. 
Creep. Creep. Okay, Terran's pushing. Make Hydras. Creep. Creep. Okay, how's my upgrades going? Okay, cool. Get the upgrades. Just start them both. It's fine. Inject, inject, inject. Now let's A-move him. And as soon as we get close, burrow my Lurkers. Burrow the Lurkers. Make Hydras. Don't stop macroing. We require, we require more Vespine gas. Mutes not enough yep. energy. Again, all we cared about was uh, burrowing the lurkers as soon as we got close to him. That's all we cared about. Insert another base so we can keep our things going. Mineral field. <laughs> okay, now let's go fix our creep in the middle of the map with our queen. We just held we held shift and made a lot of tumors with the queen. Now we can spread our creep for real with the other tumors that are already out and not dead. Wherever they are. There's like not many left. Okay, we can grab our queen again. We can make some more creep here too because he killed all the creep here as well. Now, suck my army. Let's make a bunch of lurkers again. Inject my bases, inject my bases, inject my bases. And let's go ahead and start getting, um, because we're spending so, we have so much extra minerals now and not a lot of gas. Let's get both Zergling upgrades, okay? At this stage of the game. And let's also, once we get 3-3, let's start going for Hydra. Let's start then going into uh, Zergling melee upgrades as well. We can also make some static D here. Spore, spine, spine. Make three drones. And now we can, let's just make some Zerglings to um, fill in the supply. So we got range and carapace all the way to 3-3 first. And now we're going to start getting melee at the end. Because now we're going to start using Zerglings as part of our army. Okay, so we're about to move out. Hit up burrow on all your lurkers and a move towards his shit. We can replace those buildings. It's not a big deal. This is why we have static D in every base. It will help with things like this. Okay, he's now. Let's go back up. He uh, he's hitting a different location. Static D here. And now get ready to get close to his army and then burrow. Let's burrow right now. Make units while we're doing this. Okay. Up burrow. A move him again. And burrow again when we're close to him. Now let's go back to our base and maintain it really quick. Inject. Inject. Queen's dead, so we're going to need... Let's just kill one of our Hydras, because we're a boss. Now we can make a queen to make uh, injects again. It's important. You need, kind of need three queens injecting. It is very important. Or else you'll have uh, too much money, not enough larva. Spread my creep. And now let's grab our army and do it again. Actually, first, 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 first. Grab two Zerglings. One, go to the top bases and see, and one, go to the bottom bases and see. We do have creep all, all, all over this map, so our vision's pretty great, but we still want to... We still want to see what's going on. Where are you going? What's going on here? No. Oh, there's a base here. Okay. What about over here? Is there a base right there? Behind this, we can make a spire. In case the game doesn't end. And there's a base right there. Okay. So he's got... Five bases in a little box. Let's go like this. Let's go hit the base that's kind of like isolated. Because I feel like this is probably going to be the place to defend. Which is very close to this base. Because you're defending two bases for once. Uh, at once there. So let's attack this base and just aim or uh, burrow our lurkers when they're close. Like right now. Get rid of the, the more isolated base. Take some gas. Take some gas. Check my minerals. Good. Good. Not good. Grab, move them. Good now. Good, take another base. 
How about this base? Good. Okay. We can take three drones as well off a of base and static D up this one before it's even done. Done. Okay. Now, make hydras. Make zerglings. We just remaxed. I'll burn my lurkers and run home. Inject. 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 Rotate a drone. And now, while we're here, let's go ahead and just make like a round of lurkers. Let's make like 10 more lurkers or something. And finish off the rest of my supply on zerglings. And the reason why now, this is probably going to be the last time I'm going to favor Hydra Lurker. The reason why we're going to favor something else now, which is Broodlord, is because we're keeping this guy on a low economy, which means it's hard for him to tech switch. And if it's hard for him to tech switch, it means that if we go Broodlord and he's got tanks, good luck. So we'll see what happens. Get close to him, burrow. Burrow my guys. Make Zerglings again. It actually went amazingly well. GG! All we're doing is, we're, we're the only thing we're microing there is we're looking at our army and we're hitting Burrow on the Lurkers when it's time to hit Burrow on the Lurkers. And ideally you want to hit Burrow on the Lurkers when, you're, when your Lurkers are kind of up in the face and then they Burrow and they get maximum cleaves. What was my APM this game? 159. APM is again something that is I, like you shouldn't give a shit about it that much. Your APM will go up as you become a better player. And for instance, with Zerg, your APM is always ramped up really high uh, just by default because the re if you watch my intro video, okay, watch the intro to Bronze of GM 2019, the very first video. That explains why APM for Zerg is high as fuck, and it's because of repeat delay in your keyboard when you're making your larva. Your APM spikes to like 500 and shit over and over when you spend like 20 larva at a time. Yo, Emu Farmer, thank you very much, man, for the six months sub. Welcome back. How you doing, dude? Welcome back, baby. Am I moving with my camera or my mouse? What does that even mean? I move my mouse around. Are you asking me if I click the minimap? Don't click the minimap, really. Like, it's really, really rare you ever click the minimap. About the only time you click the minimap is if, like, something's attacking your main and you don't have a camera hotkey and you need to, like, click the, mini the main to, like, get there quickly because you're way over here or something. Then sure. Okay, anyways, guys. Uh, let's talk about this game, okay, chat? Chat is asking me so many questions right now. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll answer your questions after I analyze this replay. So, so far, everything's pretty standard. It's pretty standard. St standard stuff. And we see a natural. The natural automatically makes me feel confident uh, that we're fine. And then I wanted to scout up the ramp, but he makes a marine, and the marine shoves me away. Now here is information, okay? This is this is information that you can decipher from what we just saw. Reaper. Reaper is already across the map. That Reaper was made first. There is no other way this guy could have had a Reaper across the map this fast if he would have went marine first. So this marine is second. Now here's what more here's then that, that that's obvious, right? I think everyone understands that. But here's the other part that a lot of people might not understand. If he makes a Reaper, a Reaper is the same gas cost as a reactor. If he makes an expansion this fast, it means he's on one gas. If he makes a Marine after the Reaper, it means he's, you know, further going to delay the reactor. So what this ultimately means is, is there is not a guarantee that he's going to go reactor Hellions. But if he is, it is now delayed by at least like 30 seconds. At least. Because he invested the gas away from Hellions because to go for a Reaper to scout me. He then also um, proved to me that he's on one gas by taking an expansion. So he's not two gassing this shit. So he's not rushing a factory. 
So if I were to look at everyone's vision, what we should see now from this kind of an opener is I should see a factory that has just recently started and there might not even be a reactor yet. Or if there is, the reactor is also just recently started. Let's look at what he has. Factory is like a third of the way done and reactor is barely started. It proves that because of what he's like, even though we have not seen his ramp, we can tell what he's done with his barracks. You cannot build units that hit timers like this and at the same time build fucking tech and also add-ons. If there was, if there were no units really contesting what I was doing, if there was no Reaper here, then this factory reactor could be a little faster. If there was uh, no add on, no, no, no uh, I was just saying Nexus. If there was no command center here, that could mean that there could be a second gas, which there is not. We know this because there's a command center that fast. If there was no command center here, we could think that there might be a second gas and there might be faster tech, even if there was a Reaper. So understanding a build, seeing that by the time our overlord gets here, even though with Protoss and Terran, we scout in and we see, oh, look, depot, barracks, one gas. With Zerg, all we see is the natural. If by the time your overlord gets to the natural and there is one there, it's the fucking one gas expand. That is what it guaranteed is. It's either, and it also, if, if we're talking if the natural is like, like this. If it's like halfway done by the time you get here. If when your overlord gets here, you see an expansion that is completely done, this is command center first. That is command center before barracks. If it's already like just done when you get here. And then if that was the case, there wouldn't be two units on the map. At most, there would be probably just the marine here. The reaper wouldn't exist right now because you can't make two units that fast out of a barracks if you go CC first. Stuff like that. So even though we don't know what he's doing, if we just break down the fact that he made two units out of the barracks, that, you know, that could mean he's still going to make more units out of the barracks with bio. That That's fine. But it does mean that the more... Sca okay, and if he goes bio, it doesn't matter. We don't give a fuck because we can defend bio really easy with roaches if he were to do that. But the bigger thing that makes sense is if he is going to go Hellions, it is now delayed because of the Reaper and the fact that he's one gas. It's, it, this is also a very standard build, by the way. This is about the most standard build you could ever do in TVZ. This is a completely standard. Um, so you'll see it a lot as you get higher level. But it does tell us the Hellions are coming like a full minute and a half from now. Two minutes from now. We're, we're fine. We don't got to worry about Hellions for a little while. It's not a Hellion rush. It's not like a rough build. Yo, Demon Noobs, thank you very much, dude, for the 11-month sub. Thank you. The big one, though, for sure, is uh, the Command Center. This tells us we're safe. Ultimately, the command center tells us we're safe. That's really all it comes down to. Oh, we expanded. Cool. I don't give a shit now if you're going bio, if you're going uh, mech rush, if you're going 111. I don't give a fuck because everything you're doing is now delayed long enough for me to be safe to make drones while you expanded. And now the Hellions come out and this proves they come out two at a time, which means there's a reactor. And now the Hellions uh, coming out tells us that he went 1-1. He made a Reaper Marine into a reactor factory. And now the next question is, is, is this guy going to go for a third faster command center? Is he going to go for a second factory? Is he going to go 111 all the way to a starport? We don't know what he's going to do yet. But again, right now, all we know is that there's two Hellions and we'll figure out the rest in just a minute, which is why we make an overseer on the cliff here pretty soon. Yo, Roger, thank you very much, man, for the six months, you boss. Also, another thing, too, we already kind of expected Hellions. So our mindset was already going, there's a good chance Hellions are coming, and they're coming in a little bit. So we made a wall at the front of our base because we're thinking about the possibility of Hellions. Then, secondly, we physically saw the Hellions that confirmed it, and they left his base. So we build an Evo chamber here and we grab our queen and put her in the doorway on hold position. And what this ultimately does is it prevents him from running into my base and killing drone. Like, let's just say like eight drones or something, because I'm not I don't have units yet. I'm only making drones. So you can see my uh, my queen's in the door. She's blocking it. Not the most effective spot, but she's still blocking it. Reaper comes back. Or uh, Hellions come back. They run away because there's a wall there. 
Easy peasy. She actually wasn't a whole position either. I know she wasn't. I saw her move forward. But she should be. For you, yourself, put her on whole position until you get roaches out. And the only time you should ever move her is when you know Hellions are not driving at you and you just want to quickly inject your base. But now that we have roaches, the door doesn't matter anymore. Roaches will own the shit out of Hellions if they come again. And now we have the, the Overseer scouting in. And now this is the big one. Right there. Command center. Command center. This is why you should always kind of like... Even though you're looking at your scout when you're scouting, you should at the same time build shit though while you scout. You shouldn't just neglect like making drones. 5SD, 5SD. You should still do that. But scouting this is huge. Also, Roger, thank you very much for the four good subs, dude. Did I, did I just say that? I don't know. You subbed yourself. But I appreciate the gifts as well, my dude. Thank you, man. Uh, seeing this, Command Center, huge. Huge, 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 huge. Because again, this tells us there is not... An, like, look at the army supplies right now. 28 for us already. 21 for Terran. And we're not making mass army right now. We're not, like, freaking out, being like, I need to go, nothing but roaches. We made 10 roaches. I make, like I said before, make 8 to 10 roaches. Call it a day after two base saturation. That'll keep you safe from lots and lots and lots of aggression. Seeing this third command center proves that these 10 roaches can keep us safe while we drone our third to match his third. But we can drone faster than he can because we're Zerg. So if we analyze this quickly, we can be like, cool, well now... We're fine. Like we're, we can make we can make drones. Cool. So now we know. The the thing that this does for us is it tells us that our opponent is playing a macro game, which is fine. It's solid, but it tells us that we're ahead because we know how to make a choice to keep us ahead. He is in the process of lifting his third to his third. While he lifts it to the third to take it, we are going to fully saturate our third because we can make drones in massive rounds now. So watch the drone count by the, in about. By about six minutes, when this is landed and it starts getting saturated, uh, we're talking like with five plus SCVs, our third is going to be fully saturated. So we also saw, you know, more, at least saw three racks, a factory, a starport. This also tells us it's marine medevac bio, uh, bio tank, that is. And now look around six minutes, look at our third saturation. Mutation. We have six currently, and we have eight more on the way. Look at his third. He's got one. Like, this is a guarantee to us because we knew our drone, our, we know our larva injects were going to start pumping drones because we know we're safe and we know we're going to have a, we're going to maintain a lead because we saw that. Seeing a command center floating around in the air is the same thing as seeing a command center with no SCVs on the mineral line. And then you confirm that even further by looking at the mineral lines. If they, if they're like, if you see a mineral line with like 30 SCVs on it, then yeah, sure, the guy can transfer. But if you see SCVs that are light as well, you don't really got much to worry about. And look at the, look at the third, fully saturated. Five. So we we should know we have a lead now. Because we read the build. And now look at the drone count even more. Uh, we saw also the other thing too is with the changeling that died a second ago. We saw a fourth command center. A fourth command center guys. This fourth command center is once again. It's another deviation. From him being like okay I got three bases. Now I'm going to make like five racks and I'm just going to maybe one more factory and just go mass attack on three base economy. Now this fourth command center proves that he's actually delaying his production. Like he's got decent production, but he's delaying it even more so that he can get more economy in a little bit. That is what he's focusing on. So he's focusing on the macro element of the game. And again, we saw that because we had an overseer and a changeling in his base. We physically saw it. So it gives us the opportunity to be like, cool, drones. We're good. We can make drones, boys. And now look at the army supply. Even though we made drones all the way to 78, and uh, I think we make a couple more in a minute. We made drones all the way to 78. He's at 53 SCVs. Let's really quickly look at army. Terran's at 46, army. And we're at 52, army. So even though we squeezed out this many drones, we're still matching his army. And the reason why this makes sense is because we're not wasting time 
when we see him investing into expansions, we're not wasting time. We're instead being like, slam the drones out, slam the drones out, slam the drones out. Drones are fully saturated. Now slam army out. And by and now that we're slamming an army out, we have actually still, even before he's attacked us, matched his army supply again. Because we have we have confirmed his timing is going to be later and later because we scouted the third and we scouted the fourth. Scouting is huge. More bases means slower timing. Or weak, if, if not slower timing, if he hits the same time that he would before, it's going to be a weaker timing. You can't hit the same time as someone who goes for a two base timing going for three base and expect to have the same size army. There's going to be some type of a deviation there. Something's going to be weaker. And now that we're ramping our, you know, our army supply off of our good saturation, look at it now. 70 for Terran. But he's actually keeping up with us. We're actually about 70 each. And we're going into that droning phase with Spore, spore Spine. This is going to, you know, it's going to free up a lot of our pressures that we could run into. This is, this is this is not something I will always have you do all the time. I think when we get to Diamond League, I might do this still. But in Masters League, I probably won't do this anymore. This is just like training wheels for macro. This is like Static D is still nice. But always making it every game before you move out is not always the going to be optimal. I'm just going to throw that out there. But for now, it's nice because it, it literally is like training wheels. It gives us the ability to walk out on the map and then have little tiny harassments get dealt with without having to worry about it. It reduces the, the amount of multitasking we need to do. It, it makes you have to multitask a little less, okay? Just a little bit of less effort on your part. <clears throat> and now he's doing a timing. And we are at back to optimal saturation. We're good. Army supply-wise, we're at 104. Terran's at 87. It's similar sized armies. We're a little bit we have a little bit of an advantage there, but it's similar. But let's look at the fight now. All we do is we aim seriously aim of his army, and as soon as lurkers are close, we just burrow them. And this is before lurkers were upgraded because it requires a hive, so it, it doesn't kick into effect until later on. And when you do methods like this, you might even get lurkers like this who don't help at all. They get burrowed way too far back. That's fine. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. This is not our focus right now. We're in platinum. If you play this way, you need to you need to do the bigger priority, which is instead of making sure every lurker is perfectly lined up every time, you need to be producing units while you're fighting. That is the big one. And you also need to be making sure you're efficiently mining every time while you're fighting. It's minor micro. Minor micro. Look at the production. We're producing another 10 again. Now 14. Our creep spreading. Like just keeping your macro flowing will be great because a second ago, the, the army difference right there in that last fight was like 15 or so. And now look at the army difference in this next fight that's going to happen because we macro during the fight. So he's actually catching up because we're actually we're spending a lot of time doing this upgrade thing we talked about with the Zerglings. But now we are going to max. We're at 114 army supply. So we're at 114. Terran's at 84. So actually last time it was like a 15 army supply difference. Now it's kind of like almost like a 25 army supply difference roughly. Or even like it's like 30 actually. What are we talking about? That's a 30 army supply difference now. And watch the production tab right now. Look at production. So we're not using production just yet because we're running our army in and we're looking at it to set it up. But look. Right here. As soon as we get close enough, we go, all right, time to burrow. And look at all these lurkers I have back here that aren't burrowed in the right spot. Who gives a shit? It's not the biggest deal. It's fine. But now look at production and look at supply. Uh, we'll ha I'll leave the fight over the army, but also just kind of watch the production tab. It's big. Look at our supply. Look at Terran's supply. Look at production tab. Realizing that production is always your priority is still a big deal. It's like a combo. 
more or less. Like, you're not going to be able to combo someone if you don't ever have a follow-up to anything you're doing. So if your army if your army always takes forever to remax, you'll just you know you're gonna miss opportunities to kill people all the time. I thought hive was for broods. Hive is for broods this game. We were making a spire at the end of this game. Right now we were just scouting for future expansions. And we found the exposed one. So we go attack it. We macro during the fight again. Kinda. Not really. And then... Uh, again, when you see someone who has mass tanks, this is just this, this is just something that we're seeing. Not only because... So here, here's here's another way to explain this as well. This Terran player has had a decent base count all game. Okay? he's This Terran player has been on like three or four bases or more all game. I haven't been able to put this Terran back on two bases like at all this game. This is what you would call a high economy game. And you can clearly see that through his... Even though he's not maxed, he has a lot of money. We should know that this is a high economy game. Because we haven't been able to control his economy as well as we would have liked. That was like the first base I've killed of the Terran so far. Every other fight up until 15 minutes has been me defending my base. Even though we didn't lose our bases, this is still representative of a high economy game. Now, with that being said, in high economy games, tech transitions are totally a thing. There is nothing stopping this guy from being like, you know what I want to do? Fucking BCs. Or whatever. Like, he could have, he could totally do shit like that. He could totally switch it up on us. Which is why you have to pay attention. You have to definitely pay attention to, like, just look at the army. Just first, now in Platinum League, you need to kind of look at the army just to set it up. And once it's set up, you can be like, okay, well, we got a lot of tanks. And I got a lot of lurkers. This is not the most opportunity, this, this is not the best thing for lurkers. Because here's the thing. If he is pre-sieged, if he's already sieged and I try to walk into him... I'm going to get fucking destroyed. If he is um, not sieged like this and I walk into him, the complete opposite is going to happen. It takes too long for tanks to like siege up, commit, and then deal with the lurkers because by then they're already dead. Like the lurkers just kill everything anyways. So, but here's the thing, right? We're going into lurker zergling heavy. This is pure anti-ground. We still have some hydras, sure. But a lot of our army is lurker ling. Like a good chunk of that supply. So what we're doing is we're making a spire just in case this game transitions into something else. It doesn't mean we have to use it, but we can. If we end up taking a really bad fight and this guy gets really turtly with tanks, Broodlords could be great. If this guy totally switches it up on us and pulls a fast one and goes, I'm going mass air. <laughs> we could go into, we have the ability then to be like, do we want to go Corruptor or do we want to keep going Hydras? It's really up to us, like what we want to do. So... Giving yourself the option of having transitions yourself. Even though you don't have to use them, you could use them. That is a, that is a big fact of something you should be doing in high economy situations. Because look at our bank. We can totally afford it. We can totally afford to throw it on a spire and be fine. But again, you still want to play the game of try your best to limit them from expanding any more than they already have. And keep killing their expansions before anything else. And that right there, guys, is the power of the new Lurker. Uh, not only is the range nice, but it's ever since Lurker's got that Burrow Speed upgrade, which has been in the game for a while. The fact that he wasn't sieged and we were not Burrowed yet, a Lurker burrows like a fucking speeded Widow Mine, and a tank is like, hold on, I gotta set up my siege tank, and then it, oh, I'm dead already, ah, shit. <laughs> Observe again. Look how fast the, burrows, the lurkers burrow and start attacking compared to the tank sieging. The tanks take forever. The, burrow, the lurkers burrowing is just like immediate. And the tanks just start dying before they even get a volley off. So that's obviously not ideal for tanks. You need to be sieged before the fight even starts for tanks, for that to work for tanks. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, again, the goal would be, for now, we could make... I would say the goal would be... 
we could make just Zerglings. And then, uh, you, you know, Ling, Lurker, Hydra. If it keeps working, then it keeps working. Great. Keep using it. Keep killing your opponent. But if this guy fortifies himself and does not die, and we keep bleeding out our army, instead of remaking Hydra, 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 we could just switch into Broodlord Corruptor with Zergling, and we'd be fine. That is another scout. Like, it's, it's, like, a, it's like an indirect scout thing where... Sure, we haven't scouted his base yet and seen an air transition just yet. We haven't seen, like, mass BCs. But if we just upgrade the Spire and start, like, upgrade the Spire to a greater Spire and then also start getting actual upgrades on it, like Carapace or something, we have the ability to transition later if we decide, you know what, it's actually time to do that. It is an option, then. It's it. You're covering your bases, basically, when you do shit like this. It also wouldn't be the worst idea either to do something like, and we'll do this as well in the future. It wouldn't be a bad idea either to do something like make an Ultralisk Din and just get the upgrades, even though we might not use it. If we ever get rid of the tank count and now all it is, is like, let's just say it's like Vikings and Marines. That would be a great time to make Ultras. It's like just seeing what he has and going, what would be good against that? And trying to be like, okay, you have... It's like rock, paper, scissors. You have rock, I'm going to make paper. I'm going to always counter what you're doing. But if your current army is working, just keep doing whatever's working. It's fine. But I know I know it sounds kind of overwhelming and, and uh, maybe a little confusing right now. It probably does. But this is why... Uh, we're going to be... This is kind of what the game turns into. And again, we're trying really hard now to uh, just give you guys understanding of what the hell's going on. So most most of Platinum, most of Platinum, compositions won't change that much, but it's mostly just learning how to read the game. Like, am I ahead? Am I behind? But then in Diamond League, we are definitely going to be rotating compositions around a lot that makes sense. Like, style, like changing our style up to counter our opponent. It might be from micro styles, or it might be from unit composition styles. There's multiple ways you can think about this. But anyways, that was plat three. Plat plat two and plat one for all three races is gonna be more of the same, just lots more examples. We're gonna try and really just break down the game in a way that everybody can like understand it and hopefully it makes a lot of sense. But thank you guys for watching this plat three Zerg video. I will see you in the next one. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you for watching. Peace.